Welcome to another episode of the 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we've got Tom. Not Josh had subscribed for nine months in a row. Thank you, Not Josh. Whoa! We've got Crazy Hands Josh. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> And that's one hell of a beard, Adam. It's okay. Hi. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I do my best. I, I like your beard. It's Thanks. I'm glad you it, like it. It's a different what I'm used to seeing style-wise. Like, you, you got good down growth without having a lot on your face. What? Oh. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. So, like, mine well, my just gets, all like, the all the way on my face, but there's no, like, hanging you gotta, beard. No, you got to trim this part. This is dumb. Yeah, it is cheeks. Eyes. Your cheeks? Yeah, yeah but I'm saying cheeks. like, whenever no, I like, actually get it, like, well, I mean, I got, this is. Wait, I got you my get growth going cheeks. higher. Hey, what's going on? I can't even yeah. grow a beard. I, I have no capacity. Hair <laughs> my hair grows all the way up to here. I like no this beard little beard capacity. Not good looking. This but, is yeah. me not shaving. If I don't shave, <laughs> I get I get just this like awesome. ratty stubble because Native American. <laughs> That's not bad. That's fine. Yeah, you guys can't see this right now, but if I was closer to the camera, so I have black hair. I get like red shit in my beard when it gets this long and it's like really unkept and just looks nasty. Yeah. But at this distance, it just looks like I have a full beard. I love yeah, what that's, this camera That's kind of how mine looks always. Like all of the hair. I just and have I got, a trash bag. I actually have a couple of grays growing in over Zoom here. Zooming in on Eric, wow. I still see nothing. It's just a camera. Don't, don't worry. Before <laughs> the end of this podcast, I'll get up and close with that, mic or that camera. For <laughs> that's, all. That, that's, that's on our take. other channel. What are you 72 talking about? Beard Connector? Yes. Yeah. 72 Beard Connector. <laughs> hosted by Adam Jordan. I have him extra Dude. extra just... big on my screen right now. Really, Did I think I... I think having uh having you guys bigger on my screen would make more sense because you're so yeah. Because Adam's like a full picture. You should probably oh. get all your shit set up before the cast, Josh. This is irresponsible. Hey, hey, you know what? My shit is set up before <laughs> the cast. I'm just clicking on things because that's just what I do. When I get nervous. <laughs> I click on things and I'm freaking nah, out. I'm not fine. freaking out. This is I'm freaking great. out, man. When, when I get great. nervous, I'm I put good. my hands under here and then, and then I. Like, you know. <laughs> freaking out, man. <laughs> what is that front? Was that like a superstar? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Kirby Superstar Saga. Yeah. Yes. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he makes out with trees. I think I remember that episode. Yeah. That episode. Yeah. yeah. Kirby, Kirby yeah, always we, puts we're his... fucking it all up. Why not episode? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was uh, Kirby Master Chief edition. Edition. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. It was. It was Kirby Master Chief collection. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It came with like shipment from uh, COD and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, and also it had the it had Borderlands, the the main character of Borderlands. Yeah, yeah, and there was like all these guns everywhere, with different stats. I'm sorry, Border Man, the main character of Borderlands. Border Man. Yeah, Border. Yeah, Man. but it was all voiced by uh, Molly Shannon, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah that was who's, the one. Who's okay. Molly Shannon? Tom, we can't go full circles. Circ Tom, <laughs> Tom, no. you broke the circle. You were supposed to just go with it. <laughs> Damn it! It was going so strong. We were I fucked it up. <laughs> Yeah, fucked it up. Time. First rule of improv: you always agree and continue. <laughs> you should give me your wallet. Uh, I disagree. Damn you it! See, I would. Oh crap! I don't have my wallet. See, you agree Damn and it. continue. Damn it! I tried, guys. You advance you the seen? plot. Sorry. What I'm was watching. that? What was that? Monty? What was that? Monty Python sketch? Uh, it was like the you pay to go in and argue with somebody. Oh, oh yes, yes. Is that yes. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it was in uh, The Meaning of Life. It was um, the diner that you would pay to sit in. And instead of a menu of food, it was a menu of discussion topics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you would pay <laughs> a guy to come in and start the debate for you guys. And then you and your other partner that you went to dinner with. Oh, I remember would that. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm fantastic. talking about the one where it was just like That's an so office. Good. And you yeah, just go into the office. I remember the, the one you're and the guy sitting behind the desk. I don't remember that and you, one. And, you're, and he says something. And they're like, well, you didn't even argue with me. It's like, Yes, I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> it, kept going. it was it was a really good sketch. I can't do it because I'm it was, bad. It was uh, horrible, the argument it's, clinic. It's real, yeah, argument yeah, clinic. Was was, was was that yep. flying circus? Um, uh, I think yeah, it was just it one of been. their sketches. Well, oh, and that's what flying circus was. It was their TV show of just yes, sketch. it was it yeah. was flying circus. Yeah, okay. right. because they the had first? the Ministry of Silly Walks. 
Was yes, dude, that was really good. so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Monty Python has done some things where they're doing it in humor, but mm-hmm. in all honesty, it almost feels like it could be part of Silent Hill creepy. <laughs> Wait, I, oh, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not joking. It really could. The way those joints are moving and everything, and like they do the long arm puppet thing, it is oh, honestly that, creepy. Uh, the, the, that part, yeah, that part was really over creepy. here, <laughs> over over there. I was like, oh my god, where wait. did the fish go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Holy Grail is the first uh, first movie me and my wife ever watched together. When we were yeah, like that's 16. a good one. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I I just now, not just now, but a few months ago, I think it was finally realized the end of that movie because at the end everybody just kind of gets arrested and then it's over yeah yeah and the whole point was that it's a cop-out ending yeah i get it but yeah i love holy girl yeah, it's it's the, it's the perfect introductory to monty python because yeah. after that it gets a it's lot. got enough of, it gets it has enough of a premise to like yeah, be a somewhat accessible. Yeah, and <laughs> life, life of Brian is still kind of storyline driven, but it's mm-hmm. off more. But like my favorite movie, The Meaning of Life. The Meaning of Life is just—it's a sketch weird. movie. It's yeah, all it is, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And there was you, another one called uh, "And Now for Something Completely Different." Yeah, I've oh, never right, seen yeah. that one. That's a good one. Is it completely I different? That one. I know of it. Is it just um, the same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was there was a there was a sketch about uh, the funniest joke ever written, and they had this whole big thing about it. How uh, they started using it against the Germans in World War II, <laughs> and, <laughs> and in the process of translating it to German, uh, one person accidentally read too much of the joke and was hospitalized for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the first guy to read the whole joke died. It was it was good. I love Mon- I love British humor. I, that's just it's something good. like Ricky Gervais is one of my favorite people doing things right now. Did you mm-hmm. did you see his newest uh, Netflix special? No, I, I saw it's that the good. other day. You need to, oh, he's you need to watch it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, they had it advertised. Like, you know how Netflix does that huge thing of we know what you've been watching, but we're going to advertise something that only we have. So you mm-hmm. stick around, yeah. even though you're going to yeah. just hit down and continue what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Ricky yeah. Gervais was that for me the other day. All right. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it's I mean, he's. I don't like everything he does. Sometimes I don't care for what he's saying or how he's saying it. Or sometimes I feel like he, he goes on too long on a certain part. Oh yeah. But, uh, he drones uh, and it's, he's it's really, ungodly it's arrogant. Funny, yeah. Yeah. He is, seems like a pompous prick sometimes, but some of what it's he says thing is we really don't funny too. Sometimes it's really funny. And, and that special does have moments that are very funny. The difference is Tom, Ricky Gervais is funny. As Adam was just pointing out, so it kind of uplifts and stuff. Oh, I don't know. Wh- thing. I don't know what your redeeming quality is. Uh, this hair. You know, I I <laughs> I know Ricky Gervais. Like I've seen him in a lot of stuff, but I do not know the name. Like I I see him. I went and googled it because this is what. We oh, did okay. Here. We're professionals. Yeah. And because uh, we totally knew we was going to get on the Gervais topic, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, who is yeah, who this is this? Who is this guy? Uh, looking at well, and, and I'm like, oh, and I looked it up. I'm like, oh my god, like this guy's awesome. I I know. Him. Yeah, I see him in a lot of stuff. Have you ever seen an he idiot abroad? In the office. Hmm. Have you ever seen an oh, idiot abroad? Yeah, we were watching. Okay, so there's, there's <laughs> yeah, that so was a good show. I I liked it, but you know what I like better? Um, uh, what is it? Something with my dad travels with my dra- with my dad. I've never seen, seen that. that. Is it the is it similar? Uh, it's on Netflix as well. Yeah, it's called Travels with My Father. And it it, uh, it stars uh, Jack Whitehall and his dad. Do you know that? Do you know Jack Whitehall? Mm-mm. I don't. Oh, Jack Whitehall's awesome. You should watch him. He, he's really good. But Travels with my dad. It's on Netflix. I don't know if it's a bunch of episodes. I think it's a bunch of episodes. But like when it's over, it has like this really nice heartfelt ending, and it's really good. And it, you totally don't expect it to have like a full like a full ending like that. But it, um, it's really good. It's just about. You know, just Jack Whitehall is just like a, he goes in like, essentially like a college kid on vacation, right? And they're go, and they're traveling, um, I don't know exactly where they're traveling around, like Asia or something like that. But they're just traveling around exploring places. And, um, and his dad is like this like super rich guy, you know? And he's like, you know, wants to live a posh lifestyle, right? Kind of thing. Okay. But they're like slumming it, backpacking and stuff. It's really, it's really good. <laughs> 
it's it'd be like very, taking me backpacking, good. basically. Yeah. Like, he's wait, like, there's no know, air conditioning in your tent? What yeah, have you that, been doing that, out here? We have to carry our supplies? It's um, so I, good. I loved him in The Invention of Lying, which is actually, I just learned is... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good that's a good movie. I liked it, but apparently IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes both think it's shit. And they're just wrong. It's not like well, the best right, movie uh, I've ever seen, seen, but it was yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, I, for the most part, it. Rotten Tomatoes hates movies. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, no, no, okay. They like stupid Oscar-winning, like Hollywood masturbation movies. Yeah, and the only reason you don't like it because you're not smart enough to exactly. understand what exactly. it's going like, for. Oh, fuck, what's what's that movie with goddamn old Batman in it? Um, old Batman. Yeah. Old old Batman. Batman. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what was it? I think it was, uh, was it Birdman? I think it was Birdman. Birdman! Birdman? Yeah, it was, it was something. <laughs> anyway. Um, Not yeah, that it was. It was Birdman. Uh, and that was literally made to be Oscar porn. It was just Hollywood masturbating all over themselves and clapping at the end of it because they were so fucking satisfied. And it was awful. <laughs> Do you guys tend to watch Oscar-type movies? <clears throat> Um, not, I don't watch not, the Oscars, so which ones it. are the Oscar yeah. movies? <laughs> well, like, I typically don't, but there's one I do want to see because um, I do like um, Del Toro. Because, well, Del Toro um, oh, the shape, of, the shape of Water? Yes, yeah, I yeah. want to see I, that. It looks I heard good. that was good and strange, but also good. Yeah, I heard there's I like a that, sex scene between a water alien and a lady <laughs> or something, which is like... Is that how? what you're watching it for? Kind of like So the, it's a completely yeah, normal, play, uh, completely normal movie. Unicorn? Yeah. I, I've got the um, quagmire effect where I'm so desensitized to standard porn. I have to watch. No, it was uh, Carl Batanaluski. I'm so desensitized <laughs> from normal porn. I have to watch really fucked up stuff <laughs> to get me going. So it's an uh, <laughs> alien water monster and a lady. Like hey, the creature that, from the Black Lagoon comes out and it's like, okay, now we're talking. Irk wasn't <laughs> able to get off like in the past year until he saw a pacifist run of a PUBG match that ended up winning. Like he's into some really <laughs> fucked up shit. You know, uh, you know, Bird got a pacifist run on Fortnite. I saw that. That was ridiculous. Don't Our random Earth. teammate in PUBG today was going to try to do that. And then he died to the circle like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I just this dude. OK, that. I have to explain this match because this didn't make any sense. It hurt me. Um, off of the side of the map, there's those two little islands kind of by themselves that are detached from the mainland. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a new map. <clears throat> yeah we were on new map so so we're playing the new game mode which we'll describe in a little bit but that's not important to the story so much and we had one random partners three of us partied up and then one random cute guy that was on our team or whatever and he just like immediately drops as soon as the plane is able to drop and he he, he drops on one of those islands and we're like that's stupid that's a horrible place to be he's gonna have to try to get across to the mainland and then he's on the edge of the map and what if the circle's on the other side you know all this stuff Right. So we're playing a little while. Uh, he happens to be in this first circle. That's fine. We keep playing. We're doing okay. Uh, next circle, he's still in it. Next circle, he's still in it. And we what? get down to, what What was the, was it like top 15 or something by the end of the match? He's the only one alive and he's still on, like he just now left that island and he's on the edge of the map in this this tiny circle. I mean, he's in the an excellent spot. He's got level three gear. He's got an excellent weapon. Everything is going for him. And he finally gets on the comms with us and he's like, hey, you guys speak English? <laughs> like, yeah. <Yep. laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> and he's like, oh man, I'm in such a good spot right now. I'm, I'm just going to chill here. I'm not even going to kill anybody. Watch this. This is going to be great and we're going to win. And we said, good, that's awesome. And, he, and he's killing it. He's in this perfect spot for this. He's behind this giant hill on the edge of the map on the good side of the circle. I mean, everything's going for him. And the circle moves and he's got to move. So he starts circling around and he like just stands there for a second. Stands there. And then he like slowly starts running. But then he's like running towards the really steep hill. And he just dies in the circle right there. Like he could have so easily made the next circle. It was it would have yep. been no issue. And he just oh. dies. Like what what are you he, doing? He, he says, you know, I, I think I'm just gonna stay here. And we're like, no. And he's like, No, I think I'm gonna stay here. It worked one time. He, no. <laughs> and then he stayed there and then he got hit a bunch and then he left. And then he died. <laughs> 
And that's all that remains. So, Adam, do you think he speaks English? He did. Yeah, he spoke. He spoke. Uh, I mean, he was a native English speaker, obviously. He, okay. He li- this, the only reason I asked that is because this guy literally asked us four times in the game, "Hey, do you guys speak English?" It's like, okay, look, we're yeah. we're, we're in we're in Discord. None of us are in in game voice chat and PUBG because it's literal hell. Um, <laughs> so yes, we we speak English. We're just not going to respond. <laughs> As no one will. Yeah. But, so have you guys played the new uh the game mode that came out for player unknowns battlegrounds no what's, what's so different about it we played it today uh, and there was yeah. literally nothing different yeah. about it okay so. <laughs> there was an update uh one thing they did introduce is weapon skins i know people love weapon skins uh you get a free one for the scar um i unlocked some random crate and i got one for free for the sks or something Whatever. Weapon skins are kind of cool. I'm not a big fan, but, you know, they are what they are. They're kind of cool. But they also introduced a new game mode. And this is a... uh, It's on Miramar, the new map, the desert map or whatever. And it's called... um, I think it's just... I think in the game it's just like event or whatever. But it's the the, the gimmick of the mode. Event. Yeah. Event. (laughs) Welcome to the event. Welcome to the century. But we love you everybody. Event, eventually. So, so for the event, you have, or uh, you don't have, but the the gimmick of this is a flare gun. There are flare guns uh, oh, yeah. spread out across the map in these little. Uh, it's any of like the single resident homes or the little shacks, kind of off the beaten path or whatever. And I don't know how many spawn each round, but there are flare guns. One and you, yeah. So if you find a flare gun, you can shoot it up. And a package will drop, like the crates drop, directly on you that contains um, two uh, like crate level guns, ammo, two level three vests. Um, oh, wow. And an assortment of some other stuff. It like kicks you a, out. It's a hell of yeah. a drop. But everyone and, knows it's coming there. Right, yeah. yeah. And it's a cool idea. I like that idea. Like, okay, well, we can get all this really good gear guaranteed right, like dropping right where we are, but other people are going to see it and probably flock to it or whatever, you know, typical stuff with the crates, but more flexibility. But we played what, three or four rounds and didn't encounter one flare gun. Nice. So it kind of sounds like, I don't know, (laughs) like maybe it's awesome. I don't know. (laughs) It's a lot like there's a, there's pinatas in Fortnite. And those have okay. been around. Rec- those are recent. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like pinata. So like as you like, or the, they're like llamas. Loot llamas have been around in, in the original Fortnite, but as like mm-hmm. kind of like essentially crates. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they put uh, loot llamas in the actual battle royale game. So like as you're wandering around, you'll see a, a loot llama. You pop it open, it has some cool shit in it. This sounds like a kind of a, a more of an event. Yeah. <laughs> like loot llama oh. takes a little while to open, but oh. this one is like, "Hey, everybody, I'm here, and I'll be yeah. here for a while. And at some point, some shit's gonna go down, and you're gonna get some good stuff if you kill me." <laughs> I really yeah. like that, though. I think that's a really it's, cool dynamic yeah. of: Do you want to yeah, be the risk. one who calls it, or do you want to be the guy that hunts it? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, all the battle royale games are risk reward, right? The whole yeah. premise yeah, of yeah, battle yeah. royale is risk reward. So, like, you could just like kind of crawl your way into the final circle but you'll die because it'll just be you and a fully decked out guy mm-hmm. like that's just unless kinda your bird so no, that's your bird yeah but but like in this it's like hey everybody like here's a big giant you know firefight's about to happen um but everyone's gonna come out with something cool if you if you survive yeah it. so i like i really like the idea of special game modes and events for battle royale games fortnite does it excellent um i haven't really played much of them but i've heard about them um, like, you know, one for a week you might be able to play and it's all snipers and pistols or something, or what was one of them? Everybody gets an RPG or something. Mm-hmm. They need to make slappers these, only an event. Yeah. But these are, <laughs> these are, these are modes that keep things fresh and interesting, uh, drastically impact the game and how you play it in that mode. This doesn't, we played four matches and didn't even see a flare gun to even have the opportunity to check out any of the new it, points of the event. It felt so, like squads. We played yeah. four rounds of squads is how it felt. 
that being said, if if they're not trying to make this a special game mode, and maybe they're just using this to test a new game mechanic for the purpose of possibly introducing this into the regular game, I kind of see that. It's kind of like the test yeah. server, except more right. people yeah. are actually playing it. Uh, it sounds like something that just should be in the game. It just seems like a reasonable thing yeah, I don't, to have I, in the yeah. main game. And if if it happens, it happens. Kind of like, you know, there should be there should be more like situation type thing. This is gonna be really weird to say. So, mm-hmm. Like things that happen given certain situations or criteria is met, and something mm-hmm. happens in battle royale. Like make the maps more alive. The first t- the first. Uh, group that actually does that and makes a map more alive in a certain way mm-hmm. um, that's going to be the best battle royale mode like you know like you you hit all three corners of the map with a certain thing and something happens in the middle or some shit you know <laughs> like something yeah like, something you know like, some like uh, that would be cool what was it um battlefield battlefield has a bunch of stuff like that where like oh they know, had yeah like the building the skyscraper yeah. would fall down or something yeah and it, yeah. it took some doing it wasn't like yeah you know you you slip on a banana peel and run into the side of the building and the thing blows <laughs> up it's like you know you had to you had to make that shit happen and mm-hmm. like i'd really like to see a battle royale game take that level it'd be cool to see dice do a battle royale game i bet they could do it pretty easily considering they're already doing a thousand billion person missions well a thousand billion is a rough estimate they are the best in the first person shooter space, I really feel. I used to love Bungie. It's so but solid. They're different. It's so but good. Dice is gun, their gunplay is just the perfect balance of yes, you have some bullet drop for long distances, but everything just feels really solid. Uh it's the like sh- a blend of it's it's still arcadey, but it's got just enough simulator in it that makes it more interesting than like a Call of Duty or something. And all their games have that study rewarding i hit you feel when you shoot yeah someone. really 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 does i i used to love scale this, like sniping people out uh, they do a good job of letting like little battles feel like epic amazing yeah. good times you know like yeah yeah that being and, said i haven't played battlefield one and i don't really know why yeah same like that <laughs> should have been a game like Irk, me and you should have picked up battlefield one at some point and like got into it for a while but we just didn't i know uh Delaz was playing it there for a while was he okay. he didn't have much bad to say about it mm-hmm. i know he got into a really fun situation where uh, he charged some dude with his bayonet and because the bayonet charge like you had to run for a while and the dude mm-hmm. dodged him and he ran off a cliff but <laughs> the oh, cliff wasn't cool. like a death <laughs> So for yeah. like five minutes, he was stuck in this position where if he went forward, the dude was on top of the cliff and just trying to shoot him. So he was just right. like <laughs> on this fucking cliff. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. Like that. I think sucks. Battlefield games are good for that emergent gameplay too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, all the vehicles so. and the C4 explosives and stuff. It's, it's cool. But I think for me anyway, more of the newer games I've been playing <laughs> tends to be open world. Speaking of, I really really am intrigued by far cry 5 everything i'm seeing is that this goddamn thing has a really really good gameplay it looks and so good there's one there's one person in particular that has been playing a lot of it <laughs> do the sound effect damn it Josh. There, you go. there it is yeah. <laughs> right, we got it. you come in oh oh shit <laughs> <laughs> things are going well okay and okay. everyone we have Bubbles. Josh. <laughs> or Josh. <laughs> yes. Josh, you yes. look so different. Um, hair you, extension. You <laughs> wear your yeah. hair out so well. I need uh, to learn that Robert tech. De Niro. Yeah, Rob- oh, yeah. Who, from what? Stardust. From what? Stardust. You never uh, watched Stardust? Nope. No. Nope. He does hair and then, like, it's longer. Yeah, when he brushes the hair on the main character, it gets longer. You come in too. Anyway, hmm. Far Cry 5. Okay. Yeah. Break it down first. So, what oh, you think? Um, hmm? What you think? It's really, really fun. Um, so, Far Cry 3 and 4 were both awesome. Amazing. And then Primal was a big fat dump. And <laughs> I was like, okay, we've been waiting for this one. Um, and it's a lot like 3 and 4. Um, the story is really, really good. Um, you feel like 
like connected to why you're actually killing all these people because in primal um you were basically like getting vengeance on all these tribes but it was mm-hmm. like felt just like unnecessary killing mm-hmm. yes so on I primal hear- i never really played primal like were you just running around with like a tomahawk hawk throwing tomahawks mm-hmm. at fuckers or like yeah what was the weapon yeah, selection? you're like, you're like rock <laughs> And um, Tech, game technology no, advances did they, so far and, uh, to where you got have, rocks. Did they have scope and stuff, rocks? And it like, really like was, you can oh, you can look oh, look down the scope of a rock. Oh, no. you, there we go. I fixed. Oh no, it. I fixed okay. it, guys. Oh, technical difficulties. Okay, Tom right, has right. an important question yeah, for so you. So bubbles. Yes. Um, in Primal, did they have like scope rocks where you could like aim down the sight of a rock and and make sure that that you hit somebody long range? Or like it would explode on contact? Yeah, something like that. You The cool thing about Primal that was different than the other ones was that you really relied on your animal companions. Um, mm. Like they did a lot of stuff. Like you could mark an enemy and then your bird would go down and like kill that enemy. So um, the bird. animal aspect was awesome. Because um, so like in this one-, one you have Boomer... Um, and Boomer's really cool, and I'm working right now towards Peaches, the cougar, and then there's uh, Cheeseburger, the bear. Cheeseburger, the bear. Uh, I gotta ask, the these are your names, right? Favorite. No, these are the names of the game. Holy shit, what? that's awesome. Cheeseburger, Peaches the bear cheese- is the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah is so you, I'm working towards getting Peaches right now. Um, uh, but it's really, really fun. It's really, really, really good. I definitely recommend it. And you can play the whole entire game uh, co-op. Oh, oh nice. really? Really? Wow. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to play, like, if Josh wanted to pick it up, uh, we could play his entire campaign co-op. Nice. nice. That's actually really a like, huge selling point for me. Yeah, like yeah. On, mm-hmm. Absolutely. on Monster Hunter, like, yeah, you can play, but I have to see my cutscene first, mm. and then you can jump in. Yeah. So you got this mm. obnoxious wait and jump and then wait and then jump. Like I, I, was I really, really, I want the Saints Row Three experience in a it, like again. <laughs> I don't think you well, get that with a Far Cry game, but nah, I'm not. really looking. I, I really, uh, I was looking at this one because I like the setting. That they're just bringing it back to like modern day America instead of like somewhere out in the Amazon somewhere. Oh yeah, no, it's it's really really fun, and you're just running around, and you're just like, you don't mind killing them because they're like psychos. And it's like a religious like, cult or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's a religious oh, cult okay. run by like uh, siblings, and so like they each have like territories, and so each sibling mm. has like its own territory. And so like I took out one, but now I'm going after the the sister right now. Um, and you just have to do X. It's kind of different from the other Far Cries because the other ones like um, you hit like major scenes if you did certain main events, but you could go mm. around and fuck around the whole map like for literally days without hitting any major events because if you didn't do any of them this one is like once you do like like five different things um you have to do like so many outposts so many um not hostages free so many hostage then like and then as you're doing it it'll hit certain events and no matter where you are that event will trigger the main story Oh, that's kind of cool. So the story can progress without you having to follow a set storyline. Yeah, exactly. But it kind of forces you to progress the story, right? Yeah, so you can... Which is, I think that it's a good thing, though, because it's so easy in games like that to, like in Skyrim, to just, like, start the main story, and then, oh, there's the side quest, and there's all this stuff to do, Mm -hmm. and oh, I can explore this area, and oh, oh, look at these guys, look at this weapon, and oh, I'm killing this dragon, and you've played Skyrim for 600 hours, and you haven't even advanced the main story quest past the third mission or whatever. I've never beaten Elder Scrolls. I never even even fought uh, the Greybeards. Or, I didn't fought. I never even (laughs) met the Greybeards. (laughs) <laughs> wait is that isn't that where you get your first like yeah yeah first shout yeah i yeah. never did that what yeah Jesus. yeah and, and i spent like 80 hours on that game and i never met the gray beards well, like 60 hours modding it with the steam workshop i yeah. did that too yeah you come in, like... <laughs> <They were fine. laughs> so um i've heard on the new far cry they've they've stopped doing the idea of i need to kill five rabbits so i can make this new wallet Yes and no. There's there's so there's in order to there's like a perk tree to unlock like 
extra ammo slots, extra things. Um, and you can kill, like you get points as you complete different mini tasks. So like kill five bison, kill da da da, you know, kill 10 people with a flamethrower. Um, and then you just get perk points and you can spend those to upgrade your character. But you can also like not if you don't want. To. So. Hmm. I heard you. Uh, so like early game, I heard that it's very difficult uh, to get money. <laughs> And you have, to you, spend gonna, it, you have to spend it wisely, right? Are you going to ask me what I spent my money on the first time? <laughs> I don't know. Are you guys going to ask her oh, what hold she on, spent? Time out, time out, So in other words... $900, apparently it's very difficult to get money. Apparently, like, you get you get them in, like, tens per, yeah, every game. Yeah, you know, I and, a lot of money early on, and I didn't know that. So I just, like, had, like, $1,000, and I was like, cool, these fingerless gloves look really sick for $900. <laughs> hey, you so can't win games fingerless without gloves. fingerless gloves. <laughs> You cannot win games without fingerless gloves. <laughs> I will say I was being significantly better after I purchased See? Yes. <laughs> yeah. you with your games. fingers on the trigger, you don't yeah. have that like false feel of but, a glove in there. If you don't yeah. have like this part of the hand cover with the glove, though, it gets cold and a little clammy and it's a little slower to pull the trigger. So that's why exactly. you got to keep the core hand warm, but the tip's free. And having tips. the tip's just free, the tips. let the bear, just the, tip. just the tips. <laughs> and just the tip's free, let those bears know you mean business. Exactly. Uh, okay, so one of, the, one of the things about Far Cry, and I think one of the other games had this too, but there's, there's a map editor for people to make their own maps. What? And I'm just yeah. saying, yeah. And it's robust because somebody made D-Dust 2 from Counter-Strike in it, and yep. it looks like Dust 2. Yeah, they made uh, they made cool. Pu they made PUBG too. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah the whole there's, thing. There's now, there's now a battle no, no, royale like mode thanks here, to yeah. modders. Yeah. So is this That's going awesome. to turn into the old Warcraft three platform where they give you such I a good map it. editor that you can actually just kind of make what you want? I would love to see that, like but the I Halo doubt Forge it. thing. Yes, and see, Halo pulled heavily off of Warcraft, but they didn't give you the assets that Warcraft mm -hmm. 3 did. Warcraft yeah. 3 was, here's our engine, here's everything we used, make shit, and let everyone play it. Yeah. It's a and separate launcher. When you go into the game and you're launching into the editor, um, and you go into the editor, it, it uh, it's a separate thing. So I don't know how robust it is or how detailed you can get with it. But it looked like you could generate an entire map around what you were doing, drop things oh, in wow. locations. So, uh, so I can make this badass scenario and be like, hey, Wit, you get this? So, and so, have her yeah, just yeah. struggle for her entire life through it. Dark Soul yeah, Invader says that, uh, that really it hard. also has all of the assets from most of the Ubisoft games. So, Irk, I think you Damn. might be right. That's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah. All you need is AI support, and then you have a full on. I'm going to make mini games and throw them up. So I'm I'm not going to get into spoiler territory, but the the thing that is pissing people off about Far Cry 5 right now is that the story is trying to bridge this gap between a, a lot of things that are very politically hot right now, but they don't mm -hmm. want to offend anyone. So they did it in a lukewarm way that offends literally everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> you've got like psychotic fundamentalist religious cult leaders, but they can't mm -hmm. really say that, you know, oh no, it's it's Christian fundamentalists because that's offensive. They're They're different. But kind of not, but totally different. And it's okay well, if also, you're killing them. They also them. make fun of like conspiracy theorists and preppers and mm. like alien people. And like the guy, the guy that you talk to that's like really into aliens is like, I'm not crazy. I, I don't believe in uh, prepping and blah, blah, blah. He's like, but aliens, they're common. <laughs> and, you know, and so like they definitely hit on a. Uh, like kind of all of those cliches of your conspiracy theorists and each yeah. different like kind of conspiracy theorists and it's actually pretty cool in, the, in that regard even though they're kind of making fun of them so I mean, they um, are making fun of them <laughs> you, you brought up the preppers um i heard that actually they leverage their fun of the preppers and actually make that like uh, stockpiles you can find out in the wild yeah, or something you get super cool loot oh. you get lots of money especially like like the money's not that easy to come by so you get lots of money really good weapons um they do know. it in a unique way though too it's not like just piles of cash just yeah, sitting there so each prepper stock is like a separate mini sort of game in its own right so like 
you'll have like a shed and it'll be locked and you'll then you'll read like a note on the door and it'll tell you like like you need to do this to this to this to this and like one of them was like a zip line one and i had to go like miles away and do the zip line course and i finally like to get to it because the final zip line was there so it was like really really cool Hmm. also it makes me laugh hey tom let's say you're a prepper and you're getting ready for the collapse of society. What's the first thing you would try to save up? Water. So not money. Yeah, I never, never <laughs> fucking understood that. It's like, well, hey, society has collapsed. Ahead. I have paper, which is as good as kindling now because there's no society to accept money. I'll give you a match. <laughs> yeah. Matches have utility and they would make fine currency. <laughs> totally fine, right? Cans of beer. Beer would make decent currency. Yeah, I didn't so realize when fresh underwear. Fresh out. underwear would make great <laughs> currency. Yeah, so whenever um, I heard about the Doomsday, I brought that up. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool to hear. I did not expect you to say, yeah, I get money from Doomsday preppers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get... You just Is it just money for the most part? You get guns and stuff. You get too. money and guns, and to be fair, like, you don't need food or water in the game to survive. So, I mean, yeah. but in mm. all of the prepper areas, there is like canned goods and, and food and, st- and water and stuff. So, like, I mean, they do show that. I think it's kind of like the Tomb Raider thing. Like, like in, um, in, the, in a lot of the Tomb Raiders, you go into like an ancient burial city and you crack open like this crazy puzzle and crack open like a sarcophagus and it's like a machine gun part. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> and you're like, like, that was cool and all, but I don't know if a machine gun part would be what I'd find. <laughs> you have but no it's idea. Like, it's also not like relevant to the story, so it's like, yeah. But I, that's, I feel like that, uh, I I hate when games do that because they eject me from the experience. They're like, oh well, it doesn't really fit the story or the world or the thing we're trying to craft. But it's a video game. It's like, oh come <laughs> on, like in well, the, every the pre- come on. Drake game when you're like spend hours climbing this navigating this like terrain and and then you drive in and then there's a hundred like Enemy. Yeah. Enemies in there. They're like yeah this has been untouched for 50,000 years and there's like as like a yeah. whole squad, a whole squad. Yeah. And you're like, how the fuck did you get in here yeah. i had to go through this hole and as a grapple and i had to climb up and yeah. jump across this thing yeah. and Almost they're the like ones that you guys. they're the ones you actually just left five hours ago and somehow were trailing you and got ahead of you without yeah. you ever seeing yeah. them yeah exactly <laughs> that's absolutely that's absolutely uncharted <laughs> but it's tomb raider too it's always been like that like we need to put mm. a challenge in front what i'd it, like them to do is do like more like there was one that had like an ancient civilization there and then once you once you got further in you were dealing with like the ancient civilization at that point you're like oh whoa yeah that's fine that makes sense. yeah was that the so, uh, i won't say anything yeah don't don't spoil <laughs> i think it's the last, start, the last it's one was what i'm talking great. is two so i mean we're talking a game that's like eight years old even so yeah. They're, yeah, they're, gonna, a while back. they're gonna do like a remastered or repackaging you know they will Mm. let's not the, get me um, on that topic <laughs> the last one was really good the last one like um when we played we we played through it um i don't think there was the last one, many like well they people... were in front of you the whole time yeah so instead of you being behind them they were in front of you the whole time the person that was actually helping them uh you know you find out later on good things about it and you, i don't want to spoil that because this is the newer one but um that it person was, was actually they were fr- Big Bird. Yeah, there it was Big Bird the whole time. <laughs> no, um, he, they were in front of you the whole time, and then you still had to like solve puzzles and, mm-hmm. and figure out more information. And they were like, and they were always in front of you until and the you very end. You were just end. like trying to stop, basically. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it made sense why they were already right. there. So are yeah. you talking so. four or the um? Five? I don't know the one. With uh, Lost the, Lost Prophecy or something. Yeah, the like one that? with yeah. the uh, the women protagonist. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> their dialogue was amazing yeah i started out thinking like okay this is kind of lame like there was one character in particular that didn't really have much to her she was like very, she was very stoic so you're like well, okay well i'm not really getting anything from her um but then as it like kind of built up they the dialogue became more like really really close-knit like really they became like really good friends and they, they developed and it was it was good it was really good so yeah. I, I think you guys should check that one out <laughs> I've I've yeah. never played an Uncharted game. 
I I don't know if it would be for me. I okay. You are an artsy fancy storyline guy. Yes, you might yes, I am. you would probably enjoy You think? Yeah, they, you would. They've got okay. a decent story. All right. I would I would say as as a as a wife who likes to sit there and watch games sometimes, um, games like that are really fun to watch him play because the cutscenes it's basically like a really cinematic movie. Hmm. Um and then together we can do the puzzles. Like we put, we do the puzzles together. But like mm. he does all the shooting because PlayStation controller sucks at shooting things. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> so he does all the shootings, and he hands me the controller, and I do the puzzles. And then, uh, then we watch the cutscenes, and it's watching a cool movie together. Yeah, especially so, playing on like a lower difficulty. Like you can get it. You can, you know you can get it. You can just get it on PlayStation now. You can so just... what what you guys are saying is that uh, you you wholly recommend Uncharted and Chill. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> chill. The Last of Us was probably the best one that yeah. we did that yeah. we played. That, and yeah, because those cutscenes, it was basically like a movie. I you can actually watch that it. gameplay though a lot more than I did the Uncharted's gameplay. Oh well, yeah, Uncharted's much more clunky. But... Yeah, Uncharted. I mean, really is. It's just Indiana Jones. If you like Indiana yeah. Jones or even you even kind of like Indiana Jones, you'll definitely like Uncharted. Um, Uncharted 4 was amazing, by the way, especially if you're like our age. It fits perfect. Like hmm. just like the. The biggest thing for me was it was the most accurate relationship that I've ever seen, <laughs> like hmm. between like a husband and wife there was like this interaction where like he fucked up as husbands do and they <laughs> sorted it out together silently hmm. and you, and and then by the end it was like you know you good i'm good we're good let's go like everything's cool but like you saw it progress and it wasn't like like you're bad okay sorry okay <laughs> bye and then great like it doesn't work like that it's like there's an actual real um like they're just getting through it together. It's like, you know, hmm. shit happened, we're gonna get through it, and everything's good now at the end, you know? It was good. But nice. anyways. We <laughs> Bunny Trail from Far Cry. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> hey, from Far Cry. I do have too. one Far Cry question. How many times have you died to a turkey? I have not died to a that... turkey yet, but I've seen many people <laughs> die from a turkey. So the turkey is notorious for some uh, somehow? And people are just getting their shit wrecked by turkeys. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, they 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 updated the game, and one of the patch notes said AI fix turkeys too powerful, and people, <laughs> and people are still dying apparently. So uh, here's a tweet from somebody that said, "I thought I thought I had faced the most formidable foes in video games, but then I came across a turkey in Far Cry 5. <laughs> the, other, the other one says, "Driving a big pickup, listening to CCR, and watching a grown man get taken down by a turkey on the side of the road is really what Far Cry is all about." This year, <laughs> it's thanks taking. <laughs> it's kind of like um, in the other Far Cry, there's the honey badger, and the honey badger would don't give a fuck. Well, yeah. What was oh, they did that in the, the game. What, what, no, on three, in three, there was the um, those little velociraptor birds. What were they? Oh, the caraways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those yeah. things were really. I did play scary. some of three. Yeah, those things would fuck you up. There's an island that was just those birds, and you cruise up in there. You're like, you like after like wiping out like 50 dudes and you roll up into that island and you park your boat and you get out you're like what's up here and then there's like 70 you're like oh okay see ya and I'm, not here. Here. I'm not fucking with this it's like the death claw camp in yeah. far cry it's just most uh, of my death no has been driving the plane and into something and uh, uh, nice. the plane mechanics are really hard on keyboard and mouse i think that would be the oh benefit of having controller plugged in i don't so I'm doing it on keyboard and mouse, but uh, and I've been listening to Dave play and the the he's on I think a controller. Oh yeah. Um, and the plane mechanics are very hard to to do, but I think like you, GTA not... Five kind of hard. Mm, I don't know how to fly a plane in GTA Five. <laughs> no I works. just have Josh Jai. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows how to fly a plane in GTA Five. Josh is pretty good. We do all right. The answer don't is you RS, crash. Don't don't let RS drive the plane. Yeah, if RS drives the plane. We're all gonna. <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna die. <laughs> also, make sure RS knows where the cover is. Yeah. Yeah. Did you you guys heard that? He doesn't need no cover. RS, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. RS, RS trying to get cover. that plane going. Oh my god. Yep. RS. 
，看点的人是。Oh, oh yeah. man! Yes. Nice. All right. So All right. Far Cry right. Five. Go Far Cry Five recommended. I would recommend. I would highly recommend. She's gonna go play it right I, now. I'm actually has a problems <laughs> on my computer right next door, so I'm gonna go back and play it. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, right. joining in with thanks us. Thanks for giving us yeah. some words on it. Indeed. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm back, everybody. It, it should Aww. have been a. It should have been a spoiler because I'm like down here. <laughs> but now, but, she said, but she's significantly shorter than me. <laughs> where'd all your hair go? I know what happened. Yeah, you changed. I got my hairs did. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that you was quick. very different. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I don't. I just get it. Like, I have a, <laughs> I have a barber on on staff. He hangs so, out here. So I've never done Far Cry's, but every time I think Far Cry, I know that they do like some really cool systems of things working together, but I always think just cause. And just I, cause oh, is yeah. just pure chaos of yeah. awesome. It's not I, as crazy as just it's cause. Not, yeah, it's, <laughs> I would, it's not a just cause. I would rather play just cause than Far Cry. Far Cry takes really? itself a little too seriously. Like I, I loved Far Cry One. It was amazing. It was immersive. It was beautiful. The AI was pretty good. Uh, it told an interesting story. Uh, the character was generic and wore a bright red Hawaiian yeah. shirt in the middle of a vast green jungle. Like it had everything that a shitty action game needs, um, and and that much more. And then I bought Far Cry Two on launch day, and it was just bad. It was boring. You... The characters didn't mean anything. I still don't know the name of anyone in that game. And it's either you kill this section of brown people or you kill this section of brown people <laughs> while sometimes taking pills from malaria. And that's Far Cry well, 2. And that's what I really did, liked did about Did you ever Fox. play 3? Did you ever play no. 3? I played 2 and you that should, was it. You should, you should actually play 3. 3 is real good. 3, I'm going to fix this. Let's, I don't want to like, crouch anymore. Okay, there we go. That's much better. No, not really that much better. I'm gonna correct yeah, it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so no, three is great. Like three, three's uh, like uh, Voss. I think his name is Voss. I don't know. He was. Like, I heard he the was main bad awesome. guy was amazing. That wasn't the main yeah. bad guy, but there you go. Spoiler oh, okay. alert. Um, he's awesome. He's really good. He's really interesting. He has this villainy to him. He has this like. He's so crazy and full of himself, and it's great. It's one of my favorite villains in a game. Yeah, they, they got a lot. They got a lot of praise, at least for the villains. You should absolutely play. It's a, I love three because in three you felt like your guy had issues. Like he came in as like a college kid, right? He came in, he had, yeah, he, he had like he was just out there, <laughs> yeah. And then and he gets dropped in the place, and they, he gets handed a gun, and he's like. What do I do with this? Like, I don't know, go go kill some like boars or some shit. And then he gets like wrapped up in this stuff. And then as long as you're following like some of the side dialogue, like there's this one point where you're talking to your friend and you're saying, like, I killed some people. I've been killing people. And he's like, it feels good. And you can <laughs> and you Whoa. feel yourself start slipping and like shearing away from like who you were. And you're like, that is awesome. Because now I feel like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> because I am a fucking psychopath because I killed hundreds of people like like I've killed hundreds of people all in the name of you know uh, freedom or whatever the hell you decide to put on that but you know you are a psychopath and you get the final choice at the very end to stay a psychopath or go back and those are your two options and it's awesome hmm. you should absolutely play three it is in my opinion, before five, right? Because I haven't played five, the high water mark of Far Cry by a long shot. I I don't think I could I could play five mostly because I I wanted when I saw and we talked about this on the on the cast when I saw that they were going to put a you know super fundy Christian religious cult in the middle of fucking Montana I was like oh my god Ubisoft is aiming for the fences they are not pulling any punches <laughs> this is going to be a not only a fantastic open world action game this is actually going to give me uh, you know Far Cry with a story with a message and what we ended up with this you know the best open world sandbox game ubisoft uh ubisoft has ever produced uh and on the other hand we ended up with a very 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 lukewarm bowl of gruel 
for a story. You don't know. You don't know that though. Okay, so that's not totally fair because, in all fairness, you have not played it, and I, I have not played every, it. So everything I'm not, I've read, so I'm not it, willing. I'm I'm definitely not willing to make that judgment because, as far as what I've seen, uh, visually, like corner of my eye, because you know she's right there playing it. It looks very fun. It looks well, no, good. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sure it's fun. Good. I'm sure it's fun. I just I wanted the story though. Was yeah, I, I wanted uh, yeah. a hard hitting story that actually commits to a message. Instead, I got something you know what uh, you know from what I've read. We get something that's very middling that doesn't want to offend anyone, okay. and in doing so, offends everyone. To say it, I still we think... wanted a game that treated Christianity with fundamentalism the same way it does Islam with fundamentalism. Yes, you that's a great way the to say that. Exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and everyone right. over here is afraid to do it. Yes, exactly. I feel it. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Amen. I'm with you. You preach it. You preach it. <laughs> but, you should, but we really should. It's, we should, anyway, should play it before. Either way, the, the Far Cry person. games are more about the gameplay than the story. That's yeah, true. And it's always been that it's, way. It's, it's yeah. I, I think that you should try three just for what it is. All right. Try. F- I, I think three is pro- definitely going to be on sale for like a dollar at some point, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> play through it, even just to play through the story on easy. And get to the end. Um, Far Cry Five looks great. The the co op option looks really fun. I really want to get involved in it, but uh, haven't because I've been playing other games. Yeah. Uh, we like just well, we just finished Vermintide. Well, we did finished is loose. This we shouldn't call <laughs> finished. We finished through the story on recruit. We got through all of the missions that are available on the lowest difficulty. So okay. we didn't finish it per se, but we did get through that first portion of it. That game's fun. Tom, you played yeah. it with us. You, I you, did. Were you there for the final boss, final match? Oh, you were there no, for everything, no. right? I, I was not there for everything. I've, I've played like four missions with you guys. Okay, cool. So it's good. All the way through, it's good. Every area is unique enough to be considered its own level. What... What I was worried about going through Vermintide is that once you there's there's three rows of missions, right? And at the end there's like a boss, a final boss on each one. So you have, you know, I think it's like four, four or five, I have to pull it up. Four or five missions, and then you have a final boss. At like at any point they could have recycled. At any point they could have just taken assets and recycled it and moved on and just like tried to make like a fun level with the same assets but they didn't and the level design in that game is stellar through and through beginning to end every single level offers its own unique experience and absolutely worth playing the final level was really good so i i have to say vermintide 2 feels a lot like what I imagine Left 4 Dead 3 would have felt like. Uh, there's there's some mm-hmm. loose RPG mechanics with uh, with gear and stuff. There's um, mm-hmm. you know, your your character who you pick. Um, you will take them through several missions and slowly upgrade them. Um, you will slowly get better loot. So it it feels a little bit like uh, a little Diablo ish um, in in that way. Um, but the scripted events. Um, the levels themselves, the design of the levels, the challenge, it's all perfectly tuned to make the, the games never, I never felt frustrated while playing Vermintide 2, but I never felt safe. It never felt like a cakewalk mm-hmm. ever. Uh, it always, it hits that perfect, just stressful enough balance that makes a, what would be a survival action game feel like a survival action game. Like you got out just by the skin of your teeth each and every Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so I know this game a lot of times gets compared to Left 4 Dead. That it there's is. a lot of similarities. It is, it is only Left 4 Dead. Well, now here's where I'm going to ask a question. Because to me, Left 4 Dead, if you only play single player Left 4 Dead, and, or or let me put it this way, co-op Left 4 Dead, you're not really playing Left 4 Dead. Hmm? To me, no, Left 4 no, Dead no, no, no. is no. full eight player experience. Oh, no, if you want to oh. talk, if you want to mm. talk real Left 4 Dead. You know, if you want to talk "quote unquote" real Left for Dead, and you want to be that guy, um, <laughs> you 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 want to play realism. Well, so no, 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 no. What, uh, I, what I'm saying but, is, I for me, Left for Dead is the playing against a human on the zombie team. That is Left for Dead. That is not Left for no, Dead. To that's me. not, or the majority dead. of people. 
but the thing is is that exists and that's a cool mode and that is fun but like i mean it, it's really about you versus the zombies really i mean that's what it, it doesn't really matter what it's about to be fair because mm -hmm. it's really just you know a zombie game <laughs> and how you play it you can play it you can play it uh competitively or you can play it uh pve the, they both offer their own unique experiences and pvp doesn't change like you'll play against harder guys or you play against you know other guys you have come up with systems on how to best get through the level and maintain your gear and how to use the different uh monsters well, appropriately yeah and that but, was my question if there was a pvp on this no, there isn't. And I don't think there should be, particularly because of how some of these areas are. I feel like I feel like uh, some of the stuff, for instance, OK, so yeah. Left 4 Dead 2 was kind of built. It was kind of built around uh, like around a PvP. Uh, I would say around an option. opportunities. Yeah, it's like an option. So like. So when you when things spawn in and there's certain pushes, like each each area in Left 4 Dead is set up as a push. One push, two push, three push, four push. And then you finish, right? You have a finale. In Vermintide, there is no. You're playing straight through mm. an hour-long run. You're going, like, not really. I don't think it's a full 45 minutes, maybe. And you're going straight from beginning to end, right? With Left 4 Dead, it was broken into four chunks, four or five chunks, and you had to play each section, but if you lost a section, if you lost a round, you'd go to the next round anyway, and you'd try to get mm. further on that round than the other team, further on that round than the other team, etc. Right? Yeah. So, Vermintide's not that. It doesn't have that. That's not built in. It's really just you're, you're going from point A to point B, and it's vicious to the to whole me, thing. The, the PvP in Left 4 Dead 2 was frustrating. Um... Uh, especially because, you know, I when going through Left 4 Dead 2 initially, I never played that mode at all. Um, and then when jumping into it after not playing Left 4 Dead for, you know, a couple years, it was, okay, everyone else is an expert at this game, and they're just mopping the floor with us, and this is not fun. Um, so I don't miss not having a PvP mode in Vermintide in the least. See, to me, having that PvP meant that I played that game exponentially longer. Because now, even, even if you ignore the fact that it's humans, it's different. Because the well, way if, that the, your opponents attack you is different than the computer. You can't just think, oh, there's going to be this guy around the corner. You don't know that. He could be up on top of the fucking roof and he's going to well, hang on that. That's, that's, you can't that's the do same that, thing. You can't do that it's with the computer either. Yeah, yeah it's the same no, thing. You can't, no, you because can't. Because the director no, system. Do, do, do you know how Left 4 Dead 2 was built? I'm talking Left 4 Dead 1, even. No, even Left 4 Dead One, same yeah, thing. Yeah, they they both had the director system, so they both um, used uh, various tunables, spawn points, uh, and even item drops to achieve the the maximum level of player stress for that difficulty level. Um, so you can't say, "Oh, there's a smoker around this corner," because there's not. There are no hard spawns in Left 4 Dead except for finale cinematic moments. Like, there will always be a tank on the roof well, of the, the skyscraper. The, the tanks were the big ones, because you knew how the tanks would attack, where when you were the person, you could hide the tank. You could wait for them yeah. to get past but that's, you. That's the only example I can think of. With everything else, it yeah. was scripted. They were randomly scripted. Uh, for the most part, smokers didn't really hang much, where with humans, you had the option to actually get around flank and hang from behind you would strategically wait for the last person instead of exposing oh, yourself yeah. i'm not saying that the ai is exactly the same as pvp right you you definitely have more synergies between the special infected with humans right than yeah. you would ever have well, with and, ai and that's yeah, the thing they're like building if, out the metas and stuff like right. that. When, you, exactly. look, look. when you're going against but, npcs if you're the last person out the door you're not worried so and I'll tell that's you this a right big now, Eric, thing to me. We can we can we can explain this really easily. Have you played PVE on anything other than normal? Yes. Have you played it on expert? I don't remember. So then that would probably be a no because if you played through those games on expert you will be extremely challenged. Those are extremely no, no, challenging you're, runs. You're not understanding so, what I'm saying. It's not a challenge thing. That's not the point. The point is... What's the point? If you're... Once again, if you're the last person out the door, 
against computers, it doesn't matter. If you're the last person out the door with humans, you're going to get killed potentially. So not uh, not, not what, just attacked. Killed. So that's a challenge, right? That's so. This is this no, no, is no, no, the, no. It's the, not that it's situation. a challenge. You're on your toes even more. I but I don't. I, don't I disagree. That. So the, okay, but, let's let's establish the 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 the, the, the parameters here. So you're saying that it it. You're on your toes, and why are you on your toes? You're on your toes because of the difficulties and synergies. No, 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 no. So because you a... don't know what's going to happen. Because Same thing even... with PVE. Yeah. No, with you, PVE, you know. you know if you're the last person out the door, and they're up in front of you, and you can see them, and you see no one between you and them, you know you're safe. You know but that. But it's, it's the exact same thing in PVE, because check it out. No, no, if, no it's not. No, no, I have no, a smoker no, behind no. the door, and I'm waiting. That's not true. Okay, so check it out. So if you're in an area and you're in the mid push, right? You're in that mid push. So you're talking about initially out of the spawn system. Okay, maybe because that's not necessarily, that's a meta, right? Okay, but in any other situation, they can still spawn behind you and they do. And they still do spawn on the push. So if you're going to do an expert run, you leave a guy in that room and you and you spread the corners. You have to spread the corners because if you don't, someone's going to spawn in that corner and they will pull you. and the smokers do like 10 times more damage. Each in infected will kill you in almost like two hits. In, in realism so, like, mode if you're doing, on Left 4 Dead 2, you will get the experience of PvP. It's, it will you, blow you, don't you have, away. You don't have people playing the meta, right? You don't have, uh, you know, the the smoker grabs some guy, the jockey grabs him and runs him into a spitter where he gets boomered and then he gets charged, right? You, you don't get those types of synergies um, because the director system doesn't want to be a fucking prick. Um, and players do because they are, um, and I'm, I'm not saying that's good or bad, right? It's just, it's just difference, right? The director system is interested in making, um, interesting and completable gameplay. Um, whereas players are interested in winning. Um, and the director is not right. If the director system wanted to win, it would just spawn but, up. It's, it's not even just winning. I enjoyed playing as zombies. I loved getting up on the building and waiting I, I and thought, everyone just so that's pushing. A, so that's a different, yeah. So yeah. then that's a different argument entirely. So if you want to play as the zombies, yeah, PVE is. The PvP is perfect and it's awesome and that's really cool. But if we're just talking about uh, PvP versus PvE and the challenge that it presents itself, this is why circling back into Vermintide, it's challenging and it's very difficult and you're sweating and you have to make sure you're managing your resources. You have to make sure you're managing your health. You have to make sure that your team is up and that you're using your, uh, you know, your specials according, like, uh, as well as you can, and I can tell right now out of the gate that at a higher and higher difficulties, it's just going to be exacerbated. Yeah, that's not might not be the word, but you get my point. Yeah, if you play, I swear, Eric, if you play all of the expert, I've done all of the Left 4 Dead, uh, all of it on expert. So you played through the whole Left 4 Dead 2 campaign. There's a whole achievement for it. Get through the whole thing on expert. It's insane, and you'll be sweating, and you'll you'll have a new a newfound love for PVE if you get through Left 4 Dead on Expert. I promise. It is an entirely different game. My big thing is, like you said, I put Left 4 Dead down almost a decade ago. Yeah. So yeah. to me, I can't. I'm not going to put the time to pick I, it back up. I gotta say, you don't Vermin, to. Vermintide but two you might is Vermintide two. Exactly. Vermintide two is thirty a bucks. Fresh new experience. It is. It is really interesting. There's a bunch of people playing in our Discord right now, which you should join if you haven't yet. Um, and it's fucking beautiful, by the way. Oh my god, just like it's it not just like graphical fidelity. Because graphical fidelity, yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. But the way they present the levels, like you'll spend mm. a bunch of time underground and in like the the grimy sewers, and then you'll you'll make this ascension up to this beautiful fucking farm field with flowing wheat and the sun's beating down on these buildings, and it's just. Oh, man. Gorgeous. Like the aesthetic of the game and the way the levels are put together have such an interesting contrast and dynamic that I, I haven't seen since Half Life 2. I really like I'm the way these levels I'm are right now. It. It's it's good. It's a good game. And you know what's even better? It's not a sixty dollar game. It's it's just not. It's a game that I'm going to play with my friends and I'm never going to play it alone. But at thirty, yeah. it's a perfect price. It really is. I agree. Hmm. And there's they can expand on it. It just it's going there's yeah. gonna be more and more. It's it has, it's going to have full mod support. Like, come on. <laughs> if it's, a, I it's not a Left 4 Dead killer yet, it I will be. I cannot wait to take my lightsaber-wielding velociraptors <laughs> and, and kill <laughs> the, my little ponies that have invaded this tiny medieval town. I cannot wait. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be good. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that loot grind. Yeah. Dark Soul Invader points out that loot grind. Oh, it's good. Ooh, loot grind. It's good. I love, I love a good loot grind. I don't, but I'm liking this one, and I don't know why. <laughs> I, love I, I hate it. Oh, oh, there are loot boxes in this game, but you can't buy them. There is no oh. way to hand the developers money. At the end, when you level up, they're just like, hey, here's some loot boxes. That's it. And you open it, them for free? It's cool because you don't have to. Yes. The, no the one thing with it, you don't have to. What, the reason I like this is because you don't have to pick up items as you run through the game. Like you don't kill a guy and then everyone scrambles to the item or one person scrambles to the item or even distributed items. It's just like at the end of the game, here's your stats, here's your box, go look. Good luck. Yep. There's there's no you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about you just you're just totally immersed in the gameplay. Same thing with the stats. You have a big stat sheet. There's three stats. You get to pick whichever little buff you want. Do you like that one? You don't like that one anymore? Change it. I don't care, says the game. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, you can just really play it. it the way you want. I, I gotta say, I'm liking loot boxes. I really do. When it's <laughs> it's implemented, I can't pay for other gear. I can't buy more loot boxes. I, I don't have to buy keys. I just get something little random, and it's kind of like a cool, you know, booster pack that I tear open, and it's fun. It's great, and I really like opening loot boxes at the it's, end. It's really, at that point, it's just like an unlock system. like a Yeah, it is. It's a randomized yeah. unlock system. Except it comes in a literal crate. Oh, and it's free. If you yeah. And you don't have to pay for it. For yeah. It. And it's also free. Also, the, the free portion, do we point that out? It's also free. Yeah. Yes. So speaking of free, um, there is a new hit indie phenomenon that is not hitting store shelves at all. It is hitting your web browsers. And it is called <laughs> Save Your Damsel Self. And it is made by people. Bye. Yeah, people. <laughs> yes, yes. It was made by people. Um, so we finished a game jam. Uh, we won a game jam. We won the Pixel yeah. Weekend number three game jam with Save Your Damsel easy. Self. Too um, easy. Yeah, it was. It was a good time. No, was, I enjoyed it. Was it. Awesome. it was a good experience. <clears throat> Yeah, it's so much fun. Play so, it, speed run it. Yeah, if, if you haven't played it, it 72pinconnector.com, click on games, click on Save Your Damsel Self, and it is right there. Um, try to beat the world record, which is currently 57 seconds. Good fucking luck. Oh my luck. god. I got 101. <laughs> it's so good. Like, it's so good to see people play something that you've made. It, it <laughs> was, like, I was yeah. just dropping it randomly, like... There's an old man Discord for Rocket League. I don't know if you guys know of it, but um, I, I I dropped it in there. Um, we we we'll start with our Discord. We dropped it in our Discord, and there was a race instantly. Like <laughs> we put a clock, but that was kind of like an afterthought. It wasn't really like yeah. we, we didn't we were like all oh, speed running's fun. I mean, like toss it in there, and everyone got hooked on it. And everyone was racing each other. The first person to get a world record even was uh, our our good pal Dark Soul Invader. Yep. And he he locked in a pretty solid time of 58 seconds, which is mm. insane. And it was really cool to see everyone go back and forth, but like the next day or so, I think it was like a Monday or something, I drop it in this like, Discord and and two guys just like clung to it and they're just like they're racing each other back and forth and like posting <laughs> up their times. Like, damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> and then like they, and they finally both got a 57. So it's actually a tie. It's uh oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a tie I, I between think, those guys. I think you could get it down to fifty six. There, Can there's you? A, there's at, a small... at some point there's there's going to be a stopping point where yeah. you just can't get any faster. So Save Your Damsel Self is an eight bit platformer single level, um with beautiful music and incredible <laughs> tear jerking pixel art. Um <laughs> and buggy horrible code. Uh, made by a couple people. <laughs> I'll be honest, it, it's not the the most fluid platformer I've ever it, played. It is. What do you it mean? Is not. It is it cool. not the best platform you've ever played? You it's the best one of all time. I mean, it's definitely my top one in the world. But and uh, top yeah, one all time. <laughs> if, if you want to play it, it's it's free. You play it in a browser. Uh, it's cool. We mm -hmm. use the Pico 8, which is a tiny little, what they call, Thank fantasy you. console. It's basically a teeny emulator with a bunch of dev tools built in. Um, that I is really, really cool, though. Really mm -hmm. love the I Pico like, 8. I like the, the you could give someone a PNG and then they can just play it. Right? Yeah. Oh, they can, so you, can cool. play, you can play the PNG. Like, I can drop it and connect it and play it. It's just so, it's such a weird gun for me. Here in about, I'm, I'm going to announce it today, but I'm hoping in about two weeks, 
uh, you will see the launch of the first ever 72 pin connector game jam. Uh, the theme is a secret. We will announce the theme when the game jam starts, uh, but we're aiming to have it be a retro game jam. So eight or 16 bit era, totally fine. We will not be participating because we are judges and we don't want to you know, do that dick move of, you know, we're only going to vote on our own shit. Um, <laughs> the prize is um, if we ever meet you in person, we give you a high five uh, and you get bragging rights <laughs> on, on our yeah. h.io game jam page. Um, yes. And the discord. And you the get Discord. to brag all and you want in the Discord. Discord, too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, You can brag if, about participating, too. That's totally welcome. Yeah, so, yeah. So and we'll, pl- it's for we'll plug your game levels. on our podcast. We yeah, will. That too. Uh, it's for all <laughs> skill levels. Um, even if you've never made a game before, which, uh, by the way, we hadn't, uh, and we still won a game jam somehow. Uh, so <laughs> jump in. Make a game. Have fun. That's all I got for, for that. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. I do have, though, uh, is yesterday I got to see Ready Player One, which is Ooh. tangentially related to gaming. I mean, is it though? Kind it of. is. It really is. Um, I guess you're right. How was it? <sighs> did, did you did read you, the book? Did, yeah, I was going to yes. say, did you suffer from the I read the book first and now the movie isn't going to be as good? Uh, because yes, I read the first? exactly. Okay. Um, so I had okay. that problem with the motion. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Um, I That's fucking why I don't read. I fucking lo- you can't read. <laughs> totally different. Different problem. <laughs> um, so I fucking love Ready Player One the book. Uh, and I will say it is poorly written. It is it is not a well written mm-hmm. book. Uh, it mm-hmm. is kinda a tween romance novel, but they list every single eighties pop culture reference you possibly can in a book in a nerdy way. Yeah, I fucking really love the book. It's great. Uh, it is it is popcorn pulp trash, and I love it because it just drips yeah. with eighties nostalgia. Um, the movie does an okay job of trying to emulate that, uh, but amazingly enough, the acting is just piss poor. It is really mm. fucking bad. Steven Spielberg made this movie, and he couldn't get teenagers to act right. Like it. It's. Have you ever dealt with a teenager? Yeah, Have you? I, I guess. <laughs> I was. I've been one at some point. And well, it's yeah. it's Teenagers weird because suck. You you look hey, at the stuff teenagers that, might be like the worst people. You <laughs> are they people? You're you're putting them on the people pedestal. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> technically people. Um, I guess you're right. If you murder know. one, that is a crime. That's, That's true. true. Except for except for people who listen to us and teenagers, they obviously are older than their year. So yeah. it, it vastly differs from the book, which I knew because, right, you can't have a movie where the main character plays joust against a lich for two hours and call that a movie. Um, that was people, awesome, though. That was such a good part. It was. They took it that was out. A great don't part. tell me. Don't tell me they took that out. They changed literally watching. every challenge. Uh, yeah, everything has been changed um, to more movieify it, and the acting is just piss poor. Um, the, the movie, like, I, I enjoyed the movie. I will never see it again. I won't buy it. I won't rent it. But it wasn't bad. It just wasn't any good. It was kind of a mediocre popcorn flick. It was kind of cool watching uh, the Battletoads and Gundam and the characters from Overwatch and Sonic the Hedgehog all beat up on a bunch of generic robot-looking guys. Like, that was pretty cool. Mechagodzilla was there. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, I have no clue what the fuck BHS. you're talking about. Don't worry about it. Um, but it was, it was yeah, it was kind of interesting. Um, they didn't get all of the characters or assets right because they couldn't acquire the licensing to them, which we kind of knew out of the gate that that was going to happen. Yeah, um, that, that's when I was reading that book for the first time, I was like, there's no way they're ever making a movie out of this. Yeah, good. And yeah. then they made a movie, and I'm like, what? How? Like, they, they basically <laughs> like, they took everything that they could acquire from uh, Sega, Blizzard. Uh, and all WB properties. So you did have the expanded DC universe in there. Um, uh, in uh, Microsoft, they had uh, some stuff from Rare and Microsoft proper. Um, I don't know. It wasn't awful. It just wasn't very good. So you, so you mm. liked the book Ready Player One. Have yes. you ever read? Now, if you, it's in the same vein, trashy popcorn humor, teen drama kind of thing. Have you ever read uh, Off to Be the Wizard? <laughs> no. You should. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz? You should absolutely. And it, you're going to like it more 
you two, well, not Eric, because Eric doesn't read, but you would can't like read. it. Can't read. You would like it. W- oh, can't read. <laughs> Eric can't read. So it's not a big deal. But Tom, you would actually probably really like it. It has some programmer y stuff in there that's quite oh. funny. And it's just a thing. You just need to just, just, just write it out and report back. It's like an hour read. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a, oh. it's just cool. <laughs> So yeah, I, I guess like if you're gonna see Ready Player One for free, uh, like I did the other day, um, like if you have Movie Pass and you're paying for it anyway, like go check it out. Um, it's it's not like eyes bleedingly awful. It's just not very good. It's it's very <laughs> meh. I'm glad I saw it. Just meh. never gonna see it again. Meh 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 meh. Right. Is there meh. anything yeah. that anyone wants to talk about before I just dive right into Celeste? Um, I want to talk about diving out of Celeste. Nope. All right, go for it. All right. Yeah, go ahead. So I beat Celeste, uh, and it is hard as fucking balls. Uh, it's a balls hard, 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 sweaty, hairy balls. Look at it. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, All right, cool. But anyway, uh, so I beat Celeste, and in the last world, there's like segments where you platform without touching the ground. And it is fucking difficult. Like, it's one full continuous run from checkpoint to checkpoint that's just fucking hard and crazy. Um, the story was as kind of uh, face-palmingly indie as, as you can get. It wasn't it wasn't bad, but it was uh, kind of cringy. Like, in a Tumblr yeah. cringy kind of way. Uh, um, yeah, I, I recommend it. It's a fantastic game. Uh, and I am nowhere near 100%ing it. Uh, I got to, like... Uh, a thing and there was some other stuff and I'm not going to spoil anything but to 100% this game you have to be completely masochistic like we're talking no hit Dark Souls run masochistic oh yeah. ain't nobody got time for that exactly <laughs> except for one guy yeah except yeah. For that one guy who's done it holy shit that guy the whole series Jesus yeah yeah no essentially twice yeah oh, yep. that is true yeah I got to the last boss in the last game and got hit okay Let's... That's sad. <laughs> all, all Time to hang it up, boys. Oh. <laughs> I played Enter the Gungeon this week a little I bit. I saw that. I jumped back into it. I haven't played it in so long. I got it on release and I played it for a little while and then kind of dropped off. I don't know. I don't remember why because it's such a good game. It's a it's really good game. It's so hard. It is so hard. I have yet to get past the third level boss, the third yep. floor boss. Same. And I've only gotten to the third floor boss without dying before that. What, like three times, maybe three or four times total ever? This game is hard. So yeah. you put some more time on it. I still got to ask. This I did. Is, this is my measuring stick. Measuring stick. You have one game you can choose. Are you playing Isaac? Or are you playing the Gungeon? Isaac. Oh, no. Uh, don't do that to me. They're different games. They're, they're different. They're different That's fine, games. but they're both games, and you're only allowed to have one. I'm only allowed yeah, to have one. You can only marry one. Breath of the Wild. What? Really? Yeah. No. If you had to marry one, it would be Breath of the Wild? Probably. I got tired of Breath of the Wild. Um, Man, if I had to pick Isaac or Gungeon. So, backstory, I have a decent amount of hours in Isaac. Adam is I've, the guy who got me into Binding of Isaac. Okay. Uh, let me see how many hours. Remember, you've got to compare all of the games. Because there's like six different versions. But there's of there's two. two. There's two with some expansions and stuff. So I've got 217 hours in the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, which is the one that came out after. That's yeah. It's like a remake of the original, which is like a you, if, Flash if, version. Which if you don't I have played, it, that's what you need to play. Yeah, don't even bother with the, the OG Binding of Isaac. It's literally just worse in every way. There's nothing better about it. And then the original Binding of Isaac. I uh, can't find it on my list, and I'm too lazy to look. Uh, probably probably 100 or two. 100 or two in that. And I'm still debating on which one I would rather have for the rest of all time, which speaks speaks uh, measures for the Binding of Isaac. Gungeon, like Isaac, Isaac is Gungeon beautiful, is so and the, too. the world is very well realized, but Enter the Gungeon just drips with style. There's into the gungeon drips points. with much more style. Isaac shines in the item variety and the synergies. Yeah, the synergies. Gungeon shines in actual gameplay and difficulty. There's a shotgun shell that fires shotguns that fire shotgun shells when they hit the wall. 
Yes. My my big thing is there's more environmental <laughs> interaction I feel in Gungeon. Like flip that table, hide behind that table, yeah. and that kind and of the stuff table like, flip cover system is really cool. Yes, and it's got its secrets, just like Isaac does, secret rooms and stuff like that. Uh, but I get variable bosses, procedurally generated floors, uh, a shop. You know, there's the meta game behind the shop and your credits, and there's not- sacrifice things, and all, there's all kinds of stuff. But yeah, to holy me, bullet hell, Batman. <laughs> yep. To Prepare me, to dodge the shit out of everything because what, what you're going to spend your, a lot of time. What was your line yesterday? How am I supposed to deal with How this? How am I supposed to deal with this? <laughs> I got so overwhelmed in this room. So I got into this room. There was a big room and I should have known. I should have known exactly what was going to happen because it was so telegraphed, especially if you've played Isaac. You walk into a room, there's this big tome in the middle of the room and you walk up to it and you can interact with it and it says uh, something about ominous tome puts off some sort of vibe and the options are to stay here or move away. And of course, I stayed there. I wanted to experience what this thing was because I hadn't seen one yet. Yep, it just spawns a whole shit ton of enemies in the room all at once. <laughs> and Adam died. <laughs> There's an enemy that it looks like I don't know. It's like a pillar almost. And it's made of metal. And you can't hurt it unless it opens up. And it's it an opens Iron Maiden. Up. Yeah, it's an Iron Maiden that opens up and there's spikes on the inside. And that's the only time it's vulnerable. But then it shoots these things all around itself. All these triangles everywhere. They like they shoot out around you. They stop for a second. And then they all home in on you at once. There were three of those spawned in that room at the same time. Plus oh, other fuck. enemies. Those weren't the only enemies in that in that room. So you have no clue what you get for winning that room? I don't know. It's got to be something good. So I, I actually made a... I clipped that out, I think, today or yesterday. So there's a link to that clip on our, our Twitch page. Uh, I like that everything is either a gun or a bullet. Yeah, the everything. entire game. You have a book that's like... It's like your Pokédex for guns and enemies and stuff. And it's called the Ammo Nomicon. Love it. And everything. All all of the most of the enemies are like they're either bullets that are shooting at you holding guns, or it's like a shotgun shell shooting a gun, or the boss was like the Gatling Gull, and it was a raven with a big Gatling gun, which is obviously an homage to the Metal Gear Solid boss. Yep. Oh, there's that um, MGS guy that does that. Raven. Yeah. Raven. Vulcan Raven. I've never um, played a minute of any MGS game. Psychomantis. That's, that's fine. That's completely fine. Play MGS that's, one. Or none of them. Yeah. No, play three. Yeah, three, is three. three is the best three one. Three is the best, best one? one? Yeah, three is definitely the best one by a while. One is my two. favorite. Three is the best. You know one that I really want to play? Five. No. I heard well, five was pretty good, actually. Like yeah. the first half or something. If you if you pay no I heard it was attention just a to the fun ex- like just well, I mean have you paid? Do you pay attention to a lot of the like, only reason stories? I played MGS four was for the story, yeah. and I sorely, sorely regretted that. <laughs> I MGS three though, MGS three story is fantastic. Isn't it like, hey, there's this nuclear shit going on? Go stop it! No, no, it is. It is a campy, uh, Cold War era spy thriller. It is. Excellent. So it's Tom Clancy on acid. Uh, no, it's it's North by Northwest meets James Bond meets uh, Saints Row. I guess. Oh my god! Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, enter the Gungeon. Play it. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> the Gungeon. But yeah, but. <sighs> Either way, if I'm ever going to get a game that is one and only one for the rest of my life, it's going to have to be a roguelike. Really? Otherwise, Kirk, do, you own this? do you own Gungeon? I've played a lot of it, or I shouldn't say a lot. I've played a decent amount off someone else. I don't I like know it on the Switch. The Switch is good. I probably will end up getting it It'd on be the a Switch. Great Switch yeah. game. It's a fantastic travel game. I almost picked up Isaac again. It'd be like my third time buying that Dude, game. Dude, Isaac on the Switch is great. I will tell you right now, if I got a Switch, I would absolutely buy both of those games for it. Yep. 
<laughs> I don't even care. Those, those they're are perfect the type portable of games. games. I would buy you you pick them up, you die, you put it down. It's great. Yeah, that's actually kind of with- cool. Maybe I should pick up Isaac for the Switch. That's the only. Uh, I was actually looking at the Switch and like, oh, I have the Switch. I mean, I was looking at my Switch. <laughs> I was going through the store and I'm like, I don't know what I want to play. I don't know. Like, I cannot. I I just don't pick uh, Breath of the Wild back up. I, I have a hard time because I don't have the time. Like not not that I don't have the time. It's just that I like if I'm, I'm just gonna go just play to something else. Maybe on my PC. Maybe I'm gonna go and watch a movie or something. The only time I I was playing that was when my wife was watching America's Top Model, and I'm like, all right, right on. I'm gonna play this. Um, but <laughs> she's she's done. <laughs> so it's like now we just I watch other things. So I'm like, yeah. all right. So I guess I gotta wait for just another thing like that to pop up. I'm Eat the Gungeon. same way with Gungeon's on the Switch. It. Yeah, maybe Gungeon, Gungeon, you Gungeon can feel my good. pain. <laughs> Love me some Gungeon. Or has been heroes. Josh, we gotta play Rocket League on the Switch, man. I know. I've still been waiting. Yeah, I, I got yeah, that adapter it. thing. That adapter thing's cool and all, but it just doesn't like the input lag is really bad. And then like you just played on the just Switch. Like playing, just playing own on the Switch. It. Uh, own it. Also, um, I, I know we don't have this in the news. It's other news I've been reading. Did you guys hear about the issue going on with third-party Switch docs? I don't know if it's What's a specific that? one. Uh, I do have it in the news, actually. What's going on? Um, all I know, all I read is that there are certain third-party docs right now that are actually breaking switches. Yep. You know why? Uh, because the Nintendo Switch is not USB-C compliant. Uh, when it comes to the spec in USB-C, there was an engineer that went through fucking everything, including USB debug messages after hooking shit up to the switch to get an accurate reading of what was going on. Um, and there's a lot of bad shit that Nintendo did to the switch that makes it non-compliant. And worst news, most of this can't be fixed through software. It is hardware level issues. So Ooh. when somebody tries to build a USB-C compliant 100% up to spec dock for the Switch, um, A, it's kind of hard to do because USB-C is kind of a shit show of a, of a spec. Uh, but B, if they build it right and you plug it into the Switch, chances are it's not going to work right because the Switch doesn't even react to standard USB-C oh, correctly. Oh my God. That yeah. might be why my, my adapter thing is not working. So I got this adapter thing and it's a USB stick that you plug into the back. Yep. And that has a converter and the converter switches down to like a cable, like a normal USB cable to the PlayStation 4 controller. Mm-hmm. And the input lag is insane. It's probably it not compliant. so bad. Did they check the USB 2s on the side or the USB 3s, I mean? On oh, the oh on, on the back Are of the dock. Are you talking the side of the dock, Josh? So I have to plug into the back. Is there a side of the dock? Is the side of the dock better than the back of the well, dock? What we're talking about is the little port on the bottom of the switch itself. Right, but that's what it connects into, right? Oh, like true, in the end, true, those, true. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, like, because the thing is, is those docks aren't anything special. There's yeah. nothing fancy about those docks. It's well, just a they are. Power they are supply. special. It, we thought they weren't. We thought they were just a, a splitter for USB-C. It turns out they're that's, not. They're just really fucking incompatible in the perfect way that interfaces with the way the switch itself is really fucking incompatible. So what I was thinking about doing was doing and seeing if I can pick up a USB-C to USB adapter, which actually exists. You you can try it. I I mean, and then plugging that directly in, and then maybe getting a little bit better connection. But at the end, I don't think that'll matter. I I gotta say, like, I'm I'm really hoping that Nintendo looks at this. They take it seriously. I mean, I don't know how they fucking release the Switch in such a broken state to begin with. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Is it? Uh, it's it is not. Broken. It's it not is. USB-C compliant. But what if they don't want it to be? Then that's a shitty thing to use the same connector. They could. They had plenty of fucking connectors, right? The Nintendo DS uses a completely proprietary power cable, which, by the way, isn't included in the box anymore. Go fucking yeah, figure. It's, it. it's nice though to the fact that you can charge it with any USB-C. Just don't try to do other stuff with USB-C. No, no, because even if you try to charge it, there are some like. Uh, Someone put out a dock. Was it Nyko? There was there was some company that put out a USB C dock that when you plug the switch into it, it overvolted it due to the way it was USB C in compliant in brick switches. That's what's happening. Oh wow. Yeah. It's That's fucking bad. bullshit. So even just powering the system or trying to charge it through a third party unsupported dock could break your switch. If Nintendo wanted to prevent this, if if Nintendo wanted to say, well, we're gonna do things in our own way regardless. 
the DS uses its own connector. It uses its own connector. The, it always has. The you know you look back at the the Wii, the Wii U, the GameCube. They all had their own proprietary power connectors on the back, and that's fine. If you don't want people building shit that interfaces with your system, you can build proprietary plugs. That's fine. They've done it for years. Uh, but the fact that they built a a known standard and then didn't implement it properly, that's why people are building accessories that are fucking up systems. It's shit. It's absolute shit. And frankly, Nintendo should be held responsible for it. They, they should they, put they out. Should, they should yeah, be held yeah, responsible yeah. because they call it a USB C. Yeah, exactly. So they yes, should put absolutely. out Switch Switch Hardware One Dot One that properly implements USB C. And when somebody's Switch gets fucking fried, they should replace it for free. Or they should just honestly admit this yeah. is not USB C. Be careful if you plug something into it. That's bullshit. And you know, you know, people aren't going to read that. Like they could put that on a fucking sticker on the front of the box and people wouldn't read it. If True. people, uh, once people start buying third party docs, granted, some won't, some won't, but once you start getting into the kind of person that's buying third party, you're getting more to the person that will read that though. Uh, yeah, not necessarily. True. So I, I wanted uh, to travel and I wanted to use the hotel's TV with my switch because I didn't want to just stare at the tiny screen all day. So I went to buy a travel dock that was smaller and also so I didn't have to tear apart my entertainment center. And then in some of the comments, you know, like three people said, yeah, so I sent my Switch back to Nintendo because this bricked it. And looks like we know why now. Well, once again, though, if you are the kind of person buying a third party, you're more likely to read a warning label on the Switch box proper. Maybe. Maybe. You, you are. I don't know. You might just open it and throw away the box. Yeah, no, but, well, that you might just be you might just be getting into it, and then maybe you, you become. You might be a kid. A, I understand. There, there's an edge case, right? but the the fact remains: that you're buying a third party doc. You are a more tax savvy individual. Therefore, the chances are you are more Dude, likely. to I know was that stuff. not more tech savvy as a kid when I was buying Nyko worm lights or Mad Cats controllers. I will tell you <laughs> that right you now. Sometimes you just sometimes oh, you just yeah. want like the the thing is is like travel. There's Nintendo doesn't make a travel size uh doc they just don't make their own so yeah. yeah maybe but at the same time if it doesn't exist then you're going to buy third party just because you might not even realize that it's third party because it when you go to fries it's just there oh dude, dude. i electronic saw electronic store it's just they're just sitting there so i saw why some would you shady shady shit there was a USB C power adapter <clears throat> and Nintendo's Switch accessories boxes, they, you know, it's a white background. They've got the image of the power adapter. They've got a red stripe on the left side. Uh, and they've mm -hmm. got like the left uh, or the, the top thing colored totally red that you can hang the product on a, on a hook. Um, right. I saw uh, on a website two of these side by side. One was the official Nintendo packaging. The other was uh, a knockoff third party uh, charger. And they were completely indistinguishable aside from the Nintendo logo wow. in the top left corner. Yeah. That's <laughs> so if, super I, if I was at a store and I was just grabbing something, I would have grabbed the wrong one. Yeah, now that, yeah, that, that's sucks. shitty as fuck. It is. Yeah, it is. Same that's thing with awful. Amazon. No, no, no. There's this thing. Okay, so a long time ago, I bought my wife um, this really, really nice um, controller. It was like purple and it was like painted and it was awesome. And it was like, a, it was an official controller. Not an official controller from them, but they, you know, a, a, peop, a company took an official controller, painted it, and sent the you know sent the whole thing all as one thing and it worked great and she was like oh that was really cool i'm gonna buy you one and so she found this like really cool like um it was like a matte uh lime color one and she ordered it and it came and it came in a box in a totally sealed box with playstation information all over it but when you pulled it out and plugged it in it wouldn't connect Hmm. And it wasn't until you actually took the controller apart and looked inside that you noticed that something wasn't right. It was just this random hodgepodge of electronics in there. It was not a PlayStation. And when you looked it up, you have like a the, the sticker on the back, even though it said like PlayStation, all this stuff on it, you can see and compare. And there's like a bunch of people that are posting all the um, information about it. And they're like, this is just a fucking knockoff. Shit. So they go at great lengths. To rip you off in a lot of places. That's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. it was it was it was, a, <laughs> it was quite a bummer because I was thinking like, okay, great. Well, if it's just like a painted shell in the end, and they just put fake electronics in it, whatever. I'll just use the shell. So I took that apart, and then I took mm. one of my other controllers apart, and the shell itself wasn't a PlayStation shell. Oh, mm. now that's shitty. 
So like, cause, and it all as it was, was like a few little, like th- there's like little pieces that hold uh, different components, like little bridges and stuff that hold different components in place. And one of those bridges was just too far forward. Damn. Mm. Yeah. Now that shit, I, f- it sucks to be a major producer because man, it's hard for you to combat that. Yeah. It's it really so like, fucking yeah, hard. If you're I mean, Nintendo, how do you, how do you make sure that literally every product you know, doesn't try to rip you off. And you can't, right? It's a losing battle. You can't even try. Right. Um, so I doubt they're going to do anything about these USB-C compliant, so not compliant. They, they could, developers. right? They could, they could do a minor hardware revision to actually fix their compliance issues for USB-C. Um, now, that might make it incompatible with the existing dock. We're not sure yet. Um, so it's, it's up to Nintendo to do the testing, to figure this out. What I think is they're going to ignore this problem until they make Switch 2.0, uh, which we know is going to come, right? We, we know they're going to release mm-hmm. this in Mario Red in, in Luigi Green, and they're going to say, look, <laughs> it's the same price as before. No, no, no discounts for any of you. But if you want it in green, you got to buy it again because we're Nintendo. So here's the big worry is... Part of this non-compliance, did anyone figure out if that actually had to do with uh, speeding up the transfer of video? No, it doesn't. Um, Because it's, I want to say USB-C does DisplayPort to HDMI. It's basically DisplayPort over USB-C, which is actually converted to HDMI signals. It's it's weird. It's a weird transfer, but it is in the spec. You can do it, and it's uh, it's well, actually built in. It's in the spec, but what I was asked or worried about is speed of transfer. No, no. There's USB C is plenty fast enough to do this without any jank from Nintendo. Plenty, especially when you're maxing out at 1080p. Okay, so you way way fast so enough. you think that you would be. Able, I'm. This isn't like me being an ass. Just in all yeah. honesty, you could go USB C to a TV and play without input lag. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll have to see. I think they'll fix it in the in the second revision of the hardware. I would hope they would fix it in the second revision of the hardware, but we'll have to see. Hopefully. Let's hope. Um, we had some news in Fortnite. For some reason I'm like, oh, we already talked about that. Nope, that was sound check, fellas. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> there is a comment that might be hitting Tilted Towers in Fortnite Battle Royale. Question mark. Dun, dun, dun. Tomorrow. 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 Evacuate Tilted Tomorrow. Towers. Well, we don't know. We're just <laughs> saying things. Tom, break it down for us. All right. So uh, people have been comparing uh, or they saw this like glowing shit in the sky. They're like, what the fuck is that? And as time has gone on, uh, it's been p- getting progressively larger and larger and larger. And it looks like it's a big ass comet. Um, so actually, uh, Newsweek? has kind of a big old full breakdown here of this shit. It's ridiculous. Um, I didn't expect Newsweek to get a deep dive into, like, hacking through game files and stuff. Um, (laughs) So, um, yeah, there's been, like, a weird blue light around Tilted Towers. Um, Why is there an ad in the middle of this? Fuck you. Um, Somebody hacked through some update files, and they found, like, a giant explosion cone like if something hit the ground like and a bunch of dust flies up in a cone there's one of those in uh, some of the update files they also see like a giant what looks to be like an explosion style egg or something it could just be like an easter egg where Epic's going ah ha ha we fucking fooled you um on console uh people's controllers have been vibrating randomly and it's been a bug uh, as Epic put it. But somebody broke down the rumble, and it turns out it's Morse code sending out SOS, the uh, map tile ID for uh, Tilted Towers, and then a date uh, representing April 1st, 2018. Also note what that date is. Yeah, that's also April Fool's Day. <laughs> right, right. But it's it seems really cool. Now, uh, somebody did ask one of the Epic developers, like, dude, WTF happens tomorrow, and they sent back the aliens guy. Awesome. <laughs> so for yeah. the record, if nothing happens and they have this huge buildup, this is better than Google-style April Fool's. It is. It absolutely is. <laughs> it would be really cool if it just flies by. 
Yeah. Like they put all this shit in the game just for people to mine it out and not actually yeah. use it. Oh my God. Like people have done that before. Like didn't, didn't uh, the developers behind Binding of Isaac start doing that because people kept mining no, the no, no, shit? No, 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 no. They did it for real though. They had an they had an, an actual real life thing. Yeah. Oh shit. Um, and, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in Fortnite. That would be interesting. Uh, some people, I mean, th- we only have speculation right now. Some people are saying, well, Tilted has been kind of a cancer on Fortnite since it was added to the map, so they're going to blow it up and get rid of it and turn it into a crater, and that that would be okay by me. I don't really like Tilted Towers. Um, Honestly, if they do, this is a very creative way that, uh, to my knowledge, only MMOs have done to alter maps, and yeah. that is have game-changing events occur yes. that permanently change a map. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For a game like Fortnite to do that, that would be fucking awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, like, I, I would have loved it if PUBG like rolled in a bunch of like construction equipment and put cranes everywhere <laughs> when when they were gonna add all the little towns into into the new map, right? That would have been fucking great. Just put in a bunch of construction equipment for a week or two, and then we'll yeah. add the buildings. Um, yeah, it, it kind of makes it feel like a real place. Um, while we're still while we're still on the battle royale topic, uh, Dark Soul Invader p- brings up a good point or a good new uh, news thing. An hour ago, there was a Path of Exile update that adds a Battle Royale mode. Literally, during this cast, Path of Exile, <laughs> Axile? Path Exile. Of Exile has posted an update for fucking Battle Royale. Everyone is yeah. doing this! All yeah, right, we're well, announcing it the- here today. Save your damsel self is now getting a Battle Royale <laughs> mode. Stay tuned. actually might... Shh. Also, if you are a game developer just now developing a battle royale game, you're probably too late. <laughs> if you yeah, can't get it out in the next six happening. months. No, yeah. no, not even six months. In six months, this trend will be dead. PUBG's we'll be, been out for over a year now. Uh, it, we will, it's we will been be a genre well, for a long time now. Either. It, it'll we'll stick around. around. It'll we'll stick be around well for a while. Into won't like, be seeing everybody and their mother making a m- we're gonna, new mode. We're gonna, so Royale. Blizzard is going to launch World of Warcraft Classic in that time, and then we're going to go circle back around to the MMO craze where everyone and their mother is <laughs> making an MMO. The big thing <laughs> is it's not that you're releasing a game when everyone else isn't playing it. It's you're releasing a game when everyone else is releasing the same thing, and there's already rooted versions it happened to mobas okay so what i'm hearing is that if you're a game developer start making a moba right now so i'm i'm looking i'm looking (laughs) at uh at path of exile royale the official trailer for it it's Mm. it's interesting the one thing that's really interesting about it is it's top down obviously path of exile Mm. i don't know if you guys have played it um no it's a a top down game so so it it's like uh you know it's like a what is it diablo right yeah so that's like spells and things like that it won't it's just like you're on an island it, it seems like a mod to be real like <laughs> it feels like a mod um it's it's it releases on april 1st what does that say they said they, they claimed that it was going to release on april 1st so it might be a joke yeah hmm. and- it, that would be very fitting of hey we're releasing one now too <laughs> yeah and if you look at the actual gameplay it looks like a mod it, it'd be cool if it comes out and it's just like a it's like a cool little uh, gameplay mode um, I'm sure that we I mean April Fool's jokes should be flowing in now yeah. it, yeah. Does yeah. One, it does say one there. it does say one day of development on the trailer it looks like it it looks <laughs> like it <laughs> I don't know if you guys have played through the trailer. Dark Soul you says you it's already out, you can play it. Oh it, shit. Yeah, it's it's probably just a funny thing to because it's like horribly imbalanced, it looks like, but I don't know. Maybe, so yeah. I'm really cool in a joke do, mode uh, that's uh dumpster fire intentionally. Yeah. Yeah, I'd totally play it. So uh, it'd be really Soul- cool to do a game like this where you're like um, well, you start out as like a common person. You know, Dynasty Warriors would be such a fucking cool battle royale game. <laughs> yeah, what? Dynasty Holy Warriors shit! Already, already is a battle royale. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'd be so cool because you could start out as like a grunt, and then as you play through, you get mm-hmm. you become like a you know a Dynasty Boop. Warrior. And then you can't have pacifist runs, die or be <laughs> kill or <laughs> kill or die. Kill It'd be cool if you're a farmer when you start out, and if you don't like, like... Okay, the end of the trailer I like. It shows the logo, Path of Exile, Royale, April 1st. This is actually happening. 
seriously log into the game now and play it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great i'm so fucking jaded and anything that says anything about <laughs> april 1st i'm like nope yeah. i'm not even paying attention to you until the did, second did reddit do an yeah. april 1st thing did reddit do another they've, one this they've because done they, they do they did, they've done the button they've done um like that pixel art world the thing what is on for fucking they'll give you a splash screen this time that says that it's closed down because they didn't pay their aws bill or something or whatever <laughs> yeah. web hosting they use <laughs> So, um, what, I want to see what Cards Against Humanity is next. Okay, that yeah, is one I always thing. look forward to. Yep. So, uh, what isn't an April Fool's joke is that Universal has opened five properties for use in a game dev contest presented by Unity. Um, so they've opened up five properties. You can build games based on these uh, existing IPs for this game jam uh those are battlestar galactica voltron back to the future jaws and turok three huh. oh two of those sound awesome battlestar galactica voltron. and voltron i think there could be some really <laughs> cool video games i'm come thinking out of. Voltron. Wait, wait, and Turok. again what are they they're battlestar galactica uh beats and bears let's wait beats and bears <laughs> battlestar bears. galactica uh battlestar. voltron back to the future jaws and turok <laughs> I could be interested in Turok too. I do. Turok would be interesting. So somebody is going to make a retro wave Back to the Future game. I'd be okay with that. I don't think. I don't think Back um, to the Future makes good games. Thank you. Yeah. I just don't think so. Yeah. It it doesn't have. Well, it's it's, it's telltale because you're making a game. You're making a game off a concept. You're not making a game off of like, like it's it's a concept of yeah. Telltale could do something really cool with it. I think they they did. Back to the Future Battle Royale. They did. They do. They, they did, did already. Yes, oh. they did already, and it failed. It was a massive failure. I yeah, it, it was a game just, just, are, yeah, you didn't know that there was a game which is actually nope, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> did not know that. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what they should make? Telltale you know, should make. I didn't say they should. I said they probably could. <laughs> yeah. And obviously they could because they did, and it sucked. In all, yeah. in all fairness, it got a 9 out of 10 on Steam, a 7.5 out of 10 on IGN, and a 3.4 for... What the fuck is this? Never mind, forget it. That's irrelevant. So in other words, they've, they've got decent reviews for it. Yeah, it just sounds it like it's okay. It looks like Steam's really generous with their reviews, but yeah, we laugh about IGN, but it sounds like Steam's <laughs> a little bit more generous. Battle Royale, 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, Jaws would be interesting. <laughs> it's I don't never know how, made a but... good game. The only like semi-decent Jaws game that came out was one where you played as the shark and you tried to eat people. But let's That's be honest. That's my point. That'd be fun. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, that I would be think, fun. They did I think, it. Like, I, I really like asymmetrical, uh, like, PvP games. Like, yes. Granted, yeah. they mm. always fail and they usually suck. Wait, um, Jaws like Battle them. Royale? Yeah, Jaws Battle Royale. <laughs> when the 100 sharks enter, they all have to jump out of a... Uh, what like a flying um delorean <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so there's like a hundred sharks jump out of no, a no. flying you all jump out of a tornado uh yeah, yeah but like they I mean, did not open up that proper different property, property. Different property. Yeah. so you got to stick with the same uh you know and then you have to fight raptors i guess i don't know I, this is a loose this is work in progress <laughs> so what we're, we're trying to say is 72 pin connector is putting our hat in the ring for this <laughs> we're going to make uh Sharks from the future in a robot on a battle star fighting dinosaurs. That's the plan. Battle it's, Royale. It might, might, be, might, be a little, might be a little. Did you add pirates in there? That was clever. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You just make a what? water world game. That'd be fun. It's, <laughs> it's, no act, it. it's really cool, though. I mean, I don't think we've said this yet. The they fact make that a, water world a game. big company like this is saying, you know what? Use our shit. <laughs> make something cool with our shit. That's yeah, really cool. I mean, it seems like a publicity stunt, but, you know, it gives people the chance to make something cool and opens up uh, some IP. And, you know, maybe if it's good enough, if the concept is awesome enough, it'll get made into a full game. And honestly, Voltron, I mean, is video game material. It really is. It re- that's that's yeah. the easiest thing I can think of to make a game about is, hey, it's a giant robot. He's going to kick the shit out of something. Make a game about it. All right. Just don't make a movie about it because it becomes specific rim. Yeah. Well, I actually, I'll tell you what, I actually like Pacific Rim because I went in with appropriate expectations. I said, I want to have a movie where big ass fucking robots fight big ass fucking monsters. And that is the entire story. 
I want nothing else. <laughs> and you know what Pacific Rim gave me? Big ass oh, fucking God. robots and big ass <laughs> fucking monsters. <laughs> so and that yeah. was the entire story. So if you come in to a, a movie, movie saying, I, like that one. I want robots fighting robots. That's it. Just big explosions, robots, robots. Yeah. 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 No, 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 Transformers no, no, no. are guys- no, no. I mean, no, that, you that need tried robotic to focus on Shia drive. LaBeouf. I'm telling you that right now. They need to make. If there's another video game movie that needs to be made, it's mm-hmm. Robotic Alchemaic Drive or Rad. Oh, Hundred times. Rob the Robot related? versus Voltron. That's what I want. I, I I talk about this constantly, so I don't even know if I've talked about it on this cast. You know, no. Rad. Do you know what Robotic I don't. Alchemaic Drive? I've got no, no idea. It is a fifth person fighter game with giant robots. What the fuck is fifth person? So, you know, first person, <laughs> so you don't play, you don't play yeah. as the robot. You play as a kid controlling the robot with a remote control. What's the name of this game again? Uh, Rad, Robotic Alchemaic Drive. Oh, God. So it's, third, I remember playing so a demo for this. Third person of a third yeah. person, kind of. It's a, oh, no, it's a shit. Third per- I saw so this you, game. You play as a kid in third person controlling a giant fighting robot that fights yes. other robots yes. and Godzilla like characters. Holy shit, I forgot and you, about and this it game. is it is co-op fifth person co-op. Yeah, I yeah. forgot about this game. <laughs> because because you're, like, you're in order literally to take a, a child yeah. with a remote control. I and it's not like the so controller cool. is like forward to go forward X to fight. It's like you hold L2 to take your step forward and then you t- R2 <laughs> to take your next step forward and then you switch yeah. to your arms and then your arms become like your sticks I, and at, you spin your arms around. Eric, look and at like, this. It's so good. It's so funny. You're some kid piloting this robot and you, like the camera is focused on you, the kid, and you watch your robot stomp off into the distance and you have yeah. to, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. it was so cool. It's it the was, best game like, of all time. I, I remember <laughs> I remember it got absolutely <laughs> panned in reviews because it was a pain in the ass to play. But if somebody were to yeah. if somebody <laughs> were to make What's that hard case, about that? Like fifth what? person game, what, what do you mean? Like, it was it was <laughs> like a bargain bin game when it launched. Uh, mm-hmm. if you uh, launched you this bastards for just want a novel experience, <laughs> I'll give you a goddamn <laughs> novel experience. <laughs> Watch what you ask. I'll show them. If somebody put this out on Steam for ten bucks. I would fucking buy it. That sounds great. I would Especially buy if it. they made it PvP. That would be excellent. Okay. <laughs> PvP would be. Yes. We'd have a, we, we, we would have a. We would oh have a. Oh my god! The camera meta. Is you take you, the enemy robot, puts it in front of the kid to try to block the view of the battle going no. on. No, that's not how you PvP. <laughs> what you do is you send your robot to fight the other kid. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because it was PvP when it launched. That game oh had my God. PvP in it. So, like, you actually played split screen, you know, top and bottom, which, you know, fifth person is super easy already. So, why not <laughs> yeah. incorporate split screen <laughs> Half of the on screen. a CRT monitor? <laughs> so, 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 you're like fifth person split screen playing quap. <laughs> and you're just struggling. Like, you're oh my struggling. god! The, the this matter is amazing. What I'm just picturing full, a robot coming dish. over and punting this kid, and your buddy's still trying to play while he's flying in the distance. Like, ah! so, so, like, you can actually get good at this game, and some friends actually did get good at this game. And as you play through it, you unlock different monsters. One of them, one of the, uh, 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 like, whatever they're called, I don't know robots whatever you unlock different robots one of them transforms into a jet so you can actually jump and like to make it a little bit easier on yourself you can jump on the shoulder of the robot and the robot will be like marching down the road and you're playing on the shoulder but you can also jump on the robot and have it transform into a jet and it would just fly off but you couldn't get in the jet you just (laughs) get on top of the jet (laughs) you're just like flying all over the place that game is fucking ridiculous i don't always fly but when i do so uh, my top two my my top two multiplayer experiences that you probably haven't played. If, if that was like a, a little banner that popped up on the screen, if we had some sort of effects would be robotic alchemic drive and Mr. Mosquito sumo mode. Hell yeah. Mr. Mosquito. <laughs> if you've played Mr. Mosquito and you haven't played sumo mode, go boot up your Mr. Mosquito and rotate your thumbsticks 50 times in a circle and it starts up a game, and this game <laughs> Shit. is is you and whoever's whoever plug. This game isn't multiplayer when you first when the Mr. Mosquito, but if you have another controller plugged in, you play this thing, and you're two guys on a bike on the top of this like oh giant su- circle tower. It's like a giant cylinder, and you 
pedal and you bump into each other and bump each other off Holy like uh, shit like mario party right but there's no limit to the amount of times there's no like winning screen you just play and the counter counts up on one side or on the other side and you just go and you go and you go and like we got it to like 200 e- like deaths it's so good this looks amazing Okay, so it's, it's like it's Mr. Mosquito Reckless Cyclist minigame. If you look that up on yeah. YouTube, this looks absolutely fantastic. Now, Mr. Mosquito is like, I I miss the PS2. I really do because we got a bunch of weird Japanese shit over in the States that we oh, really yeah. don't don't deserve. Like, Katamari <laughs> Damacy is number one. It is so fucking yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mosquito is the other one. Guitaru Man. Guitaru Man oh, was yeah. rad as fuck. Uh, like I, I miss the weird, quirky Japanese games that came out on Sony's platforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Mr. Mosquito is great. You're, if anyone doesn't know what Mr. Mosquito actually is, you play a mosquito and you're invading. You're like giving. You're, you're just giving a family a hard time just because yep. you're an asshole. You're giving them That's malaria. basically what it is. <laughs> kind of. I don't know. Not really. But you go it in. It was pretty and- risque back in the day because there was a there was a scene with a woman in a bathtub. Yeah, mm. yeah, she's yeah. just there, it, and it's crazy because you do like the first one ever. Like the lives are totally fine, and then it, they're like their psyche slowly degrades because they cannot <laughs> kill you because you're this like <laughs> it's like having a fly around you twenty four seven that like does not die. And this guy's like at the very last level. He's like praying to like the gods to like rid him of this mosquito, and you're still fucking his day up. Like it's it's really good, dude. But anyway, I, can, I just that I mode. miss that. I just miss all the weird Japanese shit we used to get on the PS2. Top it's two so multiplayer good. experiences is Robotic Alchemic Drive versus and Mr. Mosquito Sumo Wrestler. What's the mode called? Reckless Cyclists. Yeah, that mode is amazing. If you haven't played them, do it. That's how, and they're both PS2. <laughs> What's even more amazing is uh, hooking up a mouse and keyboard via OTG cable to your Android phone and wrecking shit in PUBG Mobile. We knew knew this. We we, we called it. We actually called that. We did. That people, whoever the first people to do that is just going to run rough shot over the rest of the community. Yep. And guess what? They're doing it. Oh, what? How? Oh, yeah. Mouse and keyboard. Yeah. They're just mouse and keyboard. (laughs) Some other news Valve is open sourcing some of their network shit. Yeah, so this is cool, um, oh. and they don't require developers to use Steam to actually uh, do this. Game networking sockets uh, for developers um, is described as a basic transport layer for games. Um, uh, the Their GitHub page states, um, and this is a quote from Gamasutra, uh, the intention is that on PC you can use the, the Steamworks version, and on other platforms you can use this version, uh, which implies that it could help out specifically for Linux developers who need functionality outside of Steam. Um, we're in the process of taking the code from the Steam Networking Sockets library and making it ready to be open sourced. So Valve is kicking back some uh, some good code to the community. Love to see this stuff. This is great. I, it, from what you just read, it made me feel like it's their push to, damn it, our push for Linux didn't work. We need to help the community. Not necessarily. This is, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons to open source things. Um, and it, it doesn't cost devs any more if they're using a modern engine to port to Linux than anything else. And Unreal, you click export, then you click Linux, and then you upload that version to Steam. In Unity, you click export, and then you click Linux, and then you upload that version to Steam. In Godot, you click export, and then you click Linux, and then you upload that version <laughs> to Steam. Uh, and then you just keep going down the list, right? Game Maker does it that way. Like, just about fucking everything ports to Linux today. So why aren't mm-hmm. they? They are. I, a lot of the games I see don't offer that in Mac. Really? Because I don't encounter those. I'm not talking the indie games. I'm talking like, well, I guess it's still indie. It's just yeah, not. See? Uh, I don't know how to say it. It's that weird $30, $40 hole of indie. I, but either way. I don't run into the issue. Let me boot up into my windows to take care of this. And then we'll see. <laughs> anyway. Um, also, Unity's releasing their engine and editor source code. It's read only. Yeah. But yeah. That's weird. Um, not really. So, Unreal Tournament uh, has released their or Unreal Tournament. God, Unreal uh, Engine. Yeah, Epic. Uh, <laughs> Epic Games um, actually made the Unreal Engine open source. Uh, so you 
can see all of the Unreal Engine source code. Um, I'm sorry, it is not open source. It is uh, readable source. Um, so you can see exactly what the engine is trying to do. You can see the capabilities. You can try to add to it. Um, you can basically see exactly how your game is is going to run and perform from a code and API level on the Unreal Engine. And uh, that's Unity, Unity right? Uh, no, that was Unreal. So just now, uh, Unity has decided to open up their source so you can read it and see how your oh, wow. game is going to perform in that uh, from a, a code and API level. And that's that's really good. It's mm. good. It's just to me, you're they're in a business of competitiveness on the engine. If they do something really novel and cool, if they have the code out there, all of a sudden Unreal's like, hey, you that's, know what? This is no. how they're doing it. Maybe we should tweak it. It's so you you can do that today, right? So reversing compiled software is getting easier every day. The tools are getting better. Like you can throw shit into Ada Pro and if it's a simple application, figure out exactly how it works in a matter of minutes, right? Um, so if if Unreal is doing something like really cool and they're implementing NVIDIA's drivers in a certain way, then you know what? You can actually put in a, a debugger shim in between your NVIDIA drivers and your engine and figure out what they're doing and then implement it in a similar way into your engine so it doesn't really hurt you to make this stuff public. Hmm. Obfuscation, my friend. <laughs> yeah, take, take, it, take it from a, a person who has in, in CTFs de-obfuscated... Uh, purposefully obfuscated data uh, for the purpose of hacking all the things in a uh, in a sanctified you can hack all the things venue not like illegally hacking all the things <laughs> that obfuscating code and making things truly obfuscated is really hard or you need to piss the person off enough that they just don't bother that's why you have things like the mob fuscator so the mob fuscator uh, actually takes um C code and turns the assembly into only move instructions. So it's literally just a because move is Turing complete, literally just turns it into a line of moves. Now, if I walk into my, you know, uh, it, one of my engines, one of my reverse engineering engines, and I just see a list of moves, I'm just not going to bother. That said, it does hurt your performance. I enjoy assembly. Assembly is fun. Not if they're all moves. It's even better. You psychopath. You just follow the registers. Anyway, um, with that little bit of a deep dive, our apologies. Um, I think that's all we have I for this week. for nothing. Yeah, that, that went off the right? deep end. Sorry about that. But um, that said, this will be our last, well, kind of, in a way, last of the weekly podcast. Starting next month, also meaning next week, the first Saturday of the month will be the 72 Pin Connector podcast. From that yeah. point forward, brought to you monthly. Monthly, monthly, monthly. So until then, you can always go over to our YouTube and just pick up on all the stuff we've done. Pick up on all the stuff you've missed at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. When we actually get them out. Yeah. Or... You can also look us up on Twitter and tell us what you want us to talk about or what we're, well, tell us what you want us to talk about at, at 72 or PC just, podcast. Do you want more? Or more just talk to us. Or talk we'll to respond. us. Also, where you can talk to us is our Discord, which you'll find a link down below yeah. on our Twitter or yeah. Twitch page, as well as you'll find it on our website of 72pinconnector.com, as well as RSS feeds for all of our podcast or link to our game jam game whenever we have our game jam we'll probably also post them up there so if possible people can check them out there as well and then also if you are watching us on youtube or some other means of listening you should come to our twitch page at twitch.tv 72 pin connector and start watching us the first saturday of every month live at 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific standard time yeah 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 and with that, any of you guys got any other parting shots you want to throw out there? Game Jam. I'm hoping to announce something on Monday. So stick to the Discord. Get to the Discord. Yes. Get the news. Yeah, Most cast game is hang out in Discord and decide what to play. Yeah. yeah. Current, current, vote, uh, current vote is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses for PS2. So I'm unless you have any better suggestions. Dota. Dota! Dota. No. Right. no. We, said, we said better suggestions. So, so we're going to yeah. play some Dota? And with that, ladies and gentlemen... Until next time.
Game on. Techies only. Game on, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Thank, thank you for watching.